I guess it's working. Hey, Joe McAvoy's here. Is anyone else just hearing background noise and not music? I don't know. Jen says no. Jen's down there. Hi, Jen. She's waving. But she's wearing Wi Files gear. Thanks to Jen and the mods for keeping track of this madhouse. Everyone come over from the video today? Or did you come over from email? Christopher Smith, love the show, first time live. Constantly invite friends. Keep it up. That's great. Spread the Wi files like a venereal disease. We love that. All right, what do we got in the queue? Justin Yoakum, I want so much more in this episode. We need to know the truth. Um, yeah, I mean, how do you find out the, the truth? Um, you know, I'll admit a bunch of those giant photos of the giant skeletons are hoaxes. Um, but the Smithsonian won't let us see what, you know, what they've got. There's, there are records that they, that they took, that they received all those artifacts, um, from all these different locations, but then they lose them. And if you ask what happened to them, they, you know, they say, we're sorry, we don't know. And, um, oh yeah, we have those giant skeleton of those giant coffins, but they're in a warehouse that has asbestos, so nobody can go in there. It can't put on a hazmat suit or a mask. I mean, government. Dave Davina says, the host is so cute. I think you're talking about uh, hecklefish, right? Yeah. Joe McAvoy. Forty nine ninety nine. Thanks for that. Um, really appreciate the support. Your support is what keeps the uh, keeps the channel going. Fantastic Forager with a super sticker for three ninety nine Australian. Thanks for that. Stubbs, thank you for calling them. By the way, that was so huge. <laughs> not not very cooperative. Kyle Guglia Gugliota Guyota Guyota. Were you a host of a TV show? I don't think I was. I don't think I hosted a TV show. I got close. I got close a bunch of times. Um, you know, in my in my LA journey, I was the king of runner up. I was the king of second place. Or Discovery, Travel Channel, TLC, A and E, CBS. Second, second place. But uh, second doesn't count in Hollywood. Cal Dreamer, Jen needs to do a bloopers channel called The Wife Files. <laughs> that's very funny. That's that's very funny. There she is. Merch. I thought you were grabbing your breast for a second there, but you're showing merch. No, I'm showing the merch. Okay. We're going to have to get you a decent microphone there. Oh. If you are jealous of Jen's uh, shirt, go to shop.thewifefiles.com and support the channel. We, Since we, this is the shirt, explain the explain the end, because that's what this shirt is. It's it's the it's what he does with his hands at the end of the so video. What, what does that say? That says be safe. Be safe. Be kind. Be kind. And know that you are appreciated. You are appreciated. Yeah. And that's the Shaolin. That's the Shaolin Kempo salute. This Kempo is a big part of my life. So that's what that is. Some people think that I'm giving um. Uh, Mason signs or Illuminati signals or something. Illuminati. That's, that's a big one. We get a lot. I'm not, it's just, it's just martial arts. All right. There she goes. There she goes. Robert Prather Prather for $10. Thanks Robert. I appreciate that. Hey, AJ, great episode as always. Audio sounds fine. Good. Um, looking at the levels. They look a little hot. We a little hot. Yeah, we're a little hot. We've got uh, the Saxon 25, 420, Speedweed for Life. That human gets it. He likes it. Hecklefish likes it. 
Don't see too many Speedweed fans anymore, but there used to be a lot of those. Uh, Grimehild, Grimhild, Grim can barely hear Hecklefish. Um, but you're saying you don't hear him either? I can hear him, but it's like he's in the other room. His mic's not on. His mic's not on? Mm-mm. Well, should I see if I could fix him? I don't know. I don't know if I would bother. <laughs> uh, Noodles1980 for $2 says, I'm the best. You are. I can't argue with that. Hypo face, hypo something with an H for three ninety nine super sticker. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, ba ba something with a B for two dollars. You should go to Egypt and see everything. I'd like to. Safe to go there? Is it safe? Safe now? I'd like to check it out. Christopher Smith, fifty dollars. Uh, All right, Hecklefish likes it. Uh, Aaron Myers, 25 for $5. Thanks for that. What's a good documentary you suggest or recommend any of your favorites, whatever topic, just need good stuff to watch. Awesome content. Well, if you like the Y files, then check out Graham Hancock's new, uh, documentary series on Netflix, um, which is called, I think ancient apocalypse. And I watched it the, basically the first day it came out and, uh, we just, we just watched them straight through. I mean, I did the wife fell asleep, but, uh, only that first time. <laughs> I've watched it all since then. I really liked it. It was good. Perm Permofit. Permofit's back. I remember you from last week for $1.99. Just a reminder, look up Whitney Webb and her book. You've been selling that to me for two weeks. Did you send it into the tips line? Uh, Daniel Bonner for $20. I'm going to get the Y files tattooed on my dusky unmentionables. <laughs> um, I'd ask you to send that in. We normally like to see the gear that you guys are wearing, but uh, Dusky Unmentionables, that scares me. Conspiracy, conspir conspiracy, something with a C for $10. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thanks for all you do. Merry Christmas to you, and, um, and you're welcome. Thanks for stopping by the, the live stream and for checking out the channel. Undercover Hustler, six ninety nine Canadian. These are proceeds of crimes. Okay, well, whatever crimes you committed, put those in the uh, put those in the chat, along with some way that we can reach you. Cody Caster for ten dollars, ten bucks says the giant skeletons date to pre flood times. That's the that's the theory is that um, is that the giants were here before the flood and got wiped out around that time. I wish we had more, wish we had more evidence, but that is the theory. And the, um, I talked a little bit about the, about the Hopi legend in the episode today, but the Hopi from the, from the Grand Canyon area also have a legend or as part of their creation story about giants that, that that lived in the Grand Canyon that were there before people. So, you know, these it's the same stories that keep popping up no matter where in the world you are. I mean, you couldn't be further apart. Two cultures couldn't be further apart than the Hopi and, you know, ancient India. But the, the stories are the same. The flood myths are the same. The giants, the creation myths, they're all the same. Blackbeard's back for $5. Thanks, Cap. Henry Menard for $1.69. Thank you for supporting the channel. Chrome guitarist, always um, generous with his support. AJ, what was your personal opinion on meeting Gene Simmons? Huh. People who meet Gene Simmons often don't have nice things to say about him because he's arrogant and all that. And he's, he's a pretty confident dude. <laughs> but... But he and, and his wife, uh, Shannon, were very, very nice to me. I mean, they were super nice to me. And um, I should keep that clip handy for when you guys ask about it because it was, it was fun. Uh, for 
For you guys who don't know, there was uh, Gene Simmons had a reality show for a few years on A and E called Gene Simmons Family Jewels, and I played a TV producer um, on one of those episodes. The episode is called Scaredy Cat. I don't remember what season it was, but what we did was we went to the Queen Mary down in Long Beach and held a seance and worked with a paranormal investigator and actually hunted ghosts on the boat. So definitely a weird day to be hunting ghosts with uh, Gene Simmons on the Queen Mary. But uh, it was it was a fun experience. And and yeah, he was he, he was really great to me. But he, he's a lot. He's a big personality. Joker's performance, 499. Ever done a video on Egyptians in Australia? I haven't even heard that that's a thing. Egyptians, they were everywhere, huh? I haven't, I haven't heard that that's a thing. That would be, um, I'm interested in looking into that. Because the, the aboriginals of Australia are considered to be the oldest sort of consistent civilization on earth that has basically been here since almost the beginning of time and hasn't changed all that much since. So I, I don't know enough about their culture. I wonder if they have similar myths um, like, like the Native Americans do. That would be interesting to check out. Joker's performance with a, with a good tip. Shannon Fiola for $20. Really loving you and the fish, AJ. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you for that uh, generous tip. We appreciate that. So you can't hear him down there? He's so, it, yeah, his mic's not on. So it sounds like he's talking underwater. <laughs> Let me see if I can fix him. Okay. Oh, he left me on here. How's everybody doing tonight? I love the episode. So just so you guys know, most of the time I don't see the episodes until they air um, when you guys see them. So this was the first time I had seen tonight's episode and it was really cool. Like I really, really liked this one. It was a lot of fun. The phone call was so cool. I'm going to suggest that we do more of that kind of stuff because that, bye. Oh, because, because that was really cool. So uh, Pixel Mater, no, not a new host. I'm, I'm AJ's wife. So, oh, Obi Wan, thank you. This is um, this is great. We love doing this together. AJ and I've worked together um, on industry stuff for as long as we were together. We've been together, so it's it's cool to work with your significant other for the most part. Um, let's see, what do we got? Kendra, your daughter's name is Jen. It's a good name. Dave Shock, thank you very much. That's very nice. Ren, yes, the Y files. We uh, we've talked about that. We're actually going to be doing um, another episode or another channel called the What Files, which is going to be a true crime channel. And I'm going to host that channel. So very excited about that. Um, Omar, I met AJ on Match.com many 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 moons ago and thank you about the shirt this is like i said this is one of our merch shirts this is our be no shirt safe kind and appreciated so we're very the merch is good it's really good we design all of it ourselves in house so very happy um that you guys like it as well let's see when is the what files frostradamus like the name uh, probably after the first of the year, we're going to try to get, um, we've got to get the Y files. We're trying to get some more content up a little bit, get some more content up on the channel, do a couple shorts a week, maybe another video. So we're working on that. Uh, but yes, sir, Lord, uh, there 
feel I am a, I am very lucky. Yes. Uh, let's see. Not the why not <laughs> files. <laughs> What is the when files is the real question. Well, yes, we have all of those, all of those in the pipeline, but uh, no, no, thank you. I like this hat too. Uh, bringing back the fat Albert hat look. Yes, trying. Uh, hecklefish is, hecklefish, that fish is a mess. Oh, somebody asked um, about all of the stuff on the board. So, yeah, he changes it every week, the board behind him. So just take a peek every week and see if you can see the changes. AJ, while you're working on, on his stuff, um, somebody's saying you're still live on the other channel, on the other video. So maybe check that while you're working on, on Heckle's mic. Um, Death Scythe Tim. Hi, Annie. Hecklefish loves you too. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get his his mic up soon. Bill Simpson just popped in. Who are you? I'm Jen. I'm AJ's wife. I am uh, one of the producers of the show. AJ is fixing Hecklefish's mic. So that's why uh, I'm here. And AJ's going to come back and he is going to <laughs> give me grief for losing live viewers. So there he is. I don't know. Should I, 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 let's, let's see if, it, let's see if he works. Nope. I, I don't know where he went. I don't know either. Um, people are saying you're still live on the other channel. So, all right, let's see. Let me look to see what other people. Shark, Filet, thank you very much. Um, you all are appreciated as well. Oh, could I have a, <laughs> could I have a sidekick like Hecklefish's wife on the what files? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. AJ and Hecklefish are such a good team. I don't know that I will have a sidekick. Um, you know, true crime's kind of a heavy topic. So maybe, we'll see. Uh, but I'm very excited about, about that channel. It's gonna be really, really cool. So Jackie, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Can you check and make sure you're not still live on the other channel? People Which I check. Saying, make sure you're not still live on the other stream. People are saying you're still live on the other video. Live? I'm just reading the chats. I'll go check. Okay. <laughs> oh, people are saying Jacob Shop. J Shop says you're not still live. It's okay. I, I didn't think I was. Yeah. All right, see if you see if you hear him. Nope. <laughs> That's too bad. He's being funny. He is. He's funny. He's a funny guy. All right, I'm going to take one last shot at it. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, we're not starving, Hanglefish. Oh my gosh. That fish is a spoiled diva. We love him though, but uh, he can be a handful. He can be a handful. Uh, Chris Wilt says he echoes Chrome Guitarist, but I don't see what Chrome Guitarist said because there are a lot of you in this chat. Thank you. Art Bell, terrible hat, terrible hat. Okay, well, you know, we all have our things. Um, I like my hat, but you know, let's see, no video on other channel. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Robert Slight, no, no. Colin, thank you. I like the hat too. Uh, two Glock 30s. Yes. Shadow people. That's going to be our next 
episode on Thursday. We're very excited. Um, that's a crazy one. I hopefully AJ will go into his experience with shadow people. That that was crazy. I was there, and uh, it was wild. Um, yeah, the chat is still going on the other on the other video, but uh, he's not live. They want me to have a tinfoil hat. I should have a tinfoil hat. Yes. We're, I'm looking into getting merch that, oh, J-Shop, yes. AJ had a shadow person experience and it was, uh, it's crazy. It was crazy. Um, let's see. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. I'm working on making like a tinfoil hat looking beanie uh, for the merch store. And I'm just going to have a chat. I'm just going to have a regular like ball cap that says tinfoil hat on it. So we are going to, Amanda Johnson, that's not really Art Bell. Unfortunately, Art Bell is no longer with us. And um, AJ and I are going to do a video where we go visit uh, his grave and, and where he lived and where he worked and that kind of stuff. So working on that. Uh, Hecklefish plushie. When will the Hecklefish plushie be out? That is a thing. That's a whole thing because uh, we want to have the plushie um, talk. When you squeeze his fin, he says some of Heckle's favorite things. So we're working on that. It just takes a little bit longer to get that uh, manufactured and not cost, you know, a crazy amount of money. So we've been talking about merch. You I are? Yeah. I said, I don't uh, think, uh, I don't think Hecklefish's mic is working. Well, it's okay. No, it's not working. He needs to get back to his bigger bowl anyway. All right. What, what, what did I miss? Am I in I the, have, uh, I was saying that I hope that they uh, that you talk a little bit next week about your shadow person experience, but don't talk about it now. I just told him it was freaky. We can talk about it at the after files um, next week after the shadow people episode. All right, I'm looking through the super chats. See where I was. Um, Gene Simmons. Egyptian in Australia. There's Shannon. Permafit giving me more homework. <laughs> Club Soul 95, 1999 super sticker. Thanks for that. I appreciate the support. Rob Ward, what are your thoughts on Cahokia Mounds and the secret findings there? Um, my goodness. And it's just, someone's blown up my phone. Uh, Cahokia Mounds, we covered in another episode a little bit. Um, fascinating area. What's fun about Cahokia is at the height of its, of its prosperity or its size, at that time in the world, it was one of the biggest cities in the world. It was bigger than London at the time. And um, we talk about it a little bit in the Moon Eyed People episode where um, when the mounds were first discovered, the... The, the white men couldn't attribute them to native people because they just couldn't believe that, you know, indigenous people could build such amazing things, uh, you know, more advanced than, than European cultures did. But, uh, but they're amazing. I've never seen them. I'd like to check it out. A fanatic forager for 299 sounds like hecklefish is underwater. Mike drop. There you go. <laughs> Uh, Elixir JX499, Moon Landing Conspiracy, please. I'd like to do that one, but we'd probably have to do it on Patreon because um, YouTube will censor that. If, you, if, if you're ever watching a video and you see that context warning underneath, let me, let me, let me set, set Jen aside. I, I, my phone is going bananas. But it can't do be anything super important because well it can't be it can't be anything 
I have the I have everybody blocked. Um. Okay. Moonland conspiracy. Yes. Well, that I'd like to do that one, but uh, if if there's a context warning underneath, that means YouTube is not promoting it. It's kind of like um a shadow ban. So you you get demonetized. You the video don't, doesn't get promoted. So it's just it could really hurt the channel to put those videos up there. So that would, but that being said, it's a super interesting topic and hecklefish has a lot of thoughts on that, obviously. So we'll probably do that on Patreon. Uh, I just need to get caught up. You know, I, I've just been way behind with the content. I was editing today's video up until about, I don't know, an hour, an hour before it went live, which is unacceptable and stressful. So we're, we'll make that happen. Moon landing video coming on Patreon soon. Uh, Death Scythe TM. Oh, I see. There's the there's the avatar. Thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate that. Rob Di Giovanni for dollar ninety nine super sticker. Thank you, Rob, for the support. Uh, over Macho Grande. <laughs> uh, Roger, can you do an episode on how uh, that's a Naked Gun reference, by the way, for you? For you youngsters, can you do an episode on how NASA accidentally recorded over the original moon landing tapes? Yeah, that would be part of the moon landing episode. There's so many of those, those so many of those little issues. Uh, how do you, how do you record over the 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 most dramatic and, and probably the most important scientific achievement of mankind? It's like oh, I just we were out of tapes out of. We were out of tapes. My show was on. I needed tapes, and that was there. Figured you had a backup. Chrome guitars for two dollars. What was it like to meet Gene Simmons? Bad. I think I answered that. Um, but Gene was very cool to me. He was very cool to me. Uh, he's 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 already about six foot four, and then he wears these platform boots everywhere that make him. I think he said seven foot one or something. So. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't, his ego doesn't need any more height than that. Blackbeard, have you ever watched Warehouse 13? I haven't. I've, I haven't seen that. Um, I've heard mixed thoughts on it. You know, mainstream, when mainstream networks cover those type of topics, I'm always disappointed. You know, the documentaries are always good, like Graham Hancock, always good. But I just, I'm always disappointed because I feel like those shows, they kind of just do the surface mystery that we all know and then it's you know whatever that's going on with the show the love story or whatever and i just don't feel like the writers are that committed committed to the content or that they really like the content or if they're in the writer's room talking about aliens or bigfoot or <clears throat> ancient cultures or whatever they're kind of you know smirking at each other about it you know so it's sometimes it just feels condescending um but the X Files did a great job with it, and I think that's because Chris Carter, uh, the creator of that, was just—he's just a huge fan of of the subject matter of the genre. Um, but if you think Warehouse Thirteen is worth checking out, I'm I'm into it. Jake, five dollars anywhere here in the Midwest want to make a web series? Great show, AJ. Well, it, Jake, you know he five dollars shares his plug, so hit him up. He's making a web series in the Midwest. Dinks is back for $7.99 Australia. Check out the Gosford Glyphs in Australia. Very interesting story. I will check that out. Maybe we do an Australia episode. There's a couple of good suggestions about that, um, about that continent coming in. Jave Shank. That's a cool name. $4.99. Thank you for the super sticker, Mr. Shank. Ambient world of music and sound. You have two live channels on at the same time. Double, double your pleasure. Ken F, pause and fix Hecklefish, please. I tried. It, I... You know, I, I couldn't get him to work. He, he's there. He's there, but we'll get him next week. Mars V for $2. Fix the fish or don't use him at all. Sorry, uh, no. I, he he didn't like that. He didn't like I I heard him, but you didn't hear him. I heard him and you wouldn't have you wouldn't have liked it. Dead Minds Podcast. I'd love to see you, Joe Rogan, and Graham Hancock have conversation. That would be a hoot. That would be fun. Um, I would mostly just watch, you know, in awe, but, uh, but when I was on Joe's show, I, <clears throat> I was worshiping the chair that Graham sat in. That's how much of a fan I am is, uh, I just, 
I just I wanted to just sniff his chair. Ajax Slam Goody for two dollars. Did you like the Stanford alien abduction case? Uh, it's either Kentucky or KY. Um, I I don't know that case. I don't think I do. Unless we covered that in another episode, but I'm not familiar with that one. So, hang on, let me let me see what he's saying here. Spite fire, fight fire Spartan. Oh, uh, fight spite fire Spartan gaming. Um, cool name. We got to work on your branding a little bit. Thank you for the twenty dollars. You should check out all the experiments the CIA did on children, like giving them LSD and feeding radioactive materials to autistic people. Also, win Skimwalker Ranch episode. Yeah. Uh, See, I, we, someone, to, I might have even been Jen or Gino, said, are you worried about running out of ideas? And as long as there's a CIA, we're going we're gonna to have plenty of content. I, I've only scratched the surface. So Spyfire is referring to MK Ultra and some of the darker parts of MK Ultra that you don't even really hear too much about, and that's with children and autistic people. Autistic people were not just tested on, they were abducted and, uh, and tested. And tested on it was it's it, it, it's probably still happening allegedly um skinwalker ranch skinwalker is an episode that a lot of people request i avoid it because it's done so much and if i can't bring something new you know i you know if i if i can't find that that nugget in a story that you haven't seen before i don't really want to do it because you can watch a skin you can watch skinwalker for hours on youtube but I want you to have a reason to check out the Y files and and kind of have faith in that when you see one of the thumbnails pop up in your feed and it's a topic that you already know a lot about. I want you to have the feeling like, oh yeah, I know that topic. I know Skinwalker, but AJ and Hecklefish always bring something new. I like their take on it. I like their twist. So I'll check it out. I I haven't been able to find that for Skinwalker yet, except for maybe debunking it. But I, but when you debunk, you, you got to be sure. So I want to be sure. But it's not out of the question. It's Skimwalker's very interesting story. Antonio Alvarado for $5. What do you know about green floating orbs? Baseball to basketball size. My brother and I saw one from our bedroom window when we were kids. Um, I've never seen one. They pop up in a lot of these stories. In the in the Diotlef Pass episode, Um for those of you guys who haven't seen that one, that's that's about these 12 hikers, Russian hikers that go out into the wilderness and they get stuck on the side of a mountain and they just show up dead in all kinds of weird ways. And they're they're missing their clothes and they're missing their ears and their tongues. And uh, it's it's a crazy story. So for years, the Outlook Pass was a huge paranormal mystery. And by the way, I think we solved it. I think we're one of the only channels to actually solve that, solve that story. Um, I hope not. It'd be cool if we didn't, but I think we did. But it was one of those stories that it was so strange that the only way to explain it was with something weird. So one of the lead researchers in that story, um, he was actually censored and suppressed by the KGB when he, when he wrote his report on what happened. Because what he said was, he said it was paranormal. He said there were orbs in the sky. He said the tops of trees were burnt as if something something flew over low and just kind of scorched the trees. So he had a lot of details like that in his report. So he said it was orbs. Um, I, I don't know of any major orb stories in the U.S. that we can do. But if there are, then um, send them into the tips line. Let me put that in the chat. So you guys have that because when you put them here, I, I, I'm not going to remember. But uh, and the tips line is not for tips like a gratuity. Some people say that like oh, constantly begging for tips. I'm like, I am. I kind of feel like I never ask for money. But they, so they, they said the tips line, you know, I was talking about the tips line. No, it's a tip like a suggestion. That's what that is. It's not you don't have to pay anything. But I read all of those. And that's where all these topics come from. They come from the tips line. I haven't, I haven't come up with my own original idea in, in like a year because the, the audience has, has the better ideas. So I don't know how many are in there now, maybe seven or 800. I'm, I mean, there's some great ones in there. 
stuff that I, I've never heard of. Like last uh, was last week with the Flux Liner. That was totally new to me. Uh, that was one of you guys put that in there. Eric W. for $5. Great episode tonight. And that's a cup of coffee or a cow. Hang on. What the hell is that emoji? I can tell what the hell that is. Tell what, what he put in there. I don't know what that is. But I appreciate it. Um, Cody Kill Kenny for 279 Canadian. Thank you for that. I appreciate that, Cody. Uh, James Coolman, 1337. Um, I think you dropped elite in it. Is that what you did? You gave us elite tip. Exceptional show as always. If it's elite tip, then put it in the chat so I know that I got it. Exceptional show as always. May your family have a joyous holiday season. Well, thank you very much, James. It's very nice of you to say. Um, Jamie Converse for $20. Thanks for this. Have you thought about the missing 411? I have. I, I love the missing 411 stories. It's just that I don't do them because David Polites does them, and he does them with such zeal and commitment that I don't know what I can do differently. Because, look, you know my style. It's um, it's kind of light. The Y files, we tell the, the subjects are are heavy and, and sometimes pretty dark, but I try to take a light approach to them. And, um, and David does not, <laughs> you know, he's, he's a committed investigator or researcher or whatever you would call him, but he, you know, he takes the stories very seriously and, you know, that's okay. People are, are missing, but, um, but our approach in the Y files is we will try to keep it light. You know, the, the the channels that that cover these topics, the the mysteries, the you know the unexplained. The reason that the Y Files is there is because I like this content, but there is there's always only two kinds of channels that do this kind of content. There one is the mystery channel that's totally committed to it. That you know Jesus was an alien, and uh, you know a giant Bigfoots ruled the earth, and you know, and that's that, and that's fact, and that's that, and they'll give you a twenty-minute video on all of that. You know, with with crappy B-roll and 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 you know, images that are that are way too compressed. You know, those kind of videos that just they're way too serious. People take take that stuff way too serious. Um, and then there are the other videos that cover the mysterious and the paranormal, and they're not serious enough. Um, like Simon Whistler. Simon seems like a good dude. He, you can't watch YouTube for 10 minutes without seeing his face. Um, but he's very condescending about the mysteries. And he has at least two channels that do this stuff. And I don't know. I think that's just a cash grab. I could be wrong. It's just my opinion. Um, but he'll tell the, the mystery. And he has good writers. So his writers will give him a 20, 30-minute script. That's good. I'll watch the video, but then he's interjecting his one-liners in, into the script, um, his little zingers, and he thinks they're funny, and maybe to him they are, but to those of us that take the story seriously, it's condescending, and it's, and I find it insulting. And look, it, don't go running to him and, and blowing up his, his feed and his channel that the Y Files is hating on it, because I'm not. I don't think he realizes that it, that it comes across that way. I think he believes, like most people do, that everyone on the planet believes the same way they do. And if you believe in, in UFOs, then obviously you're a kook because anyone who believes in this stuff is, is crazy. But we're not crazy. We just want to know the truth. I don't think there's anything crazy or weird about that at all. So back to Missing 411, um, David's very serious and, you know, I don't, I don't know if I can bring anything more that he doesn't do. That said, there's plenty of those in in the tips line that are super interesting that I that I'd like to do, and maybe we will, you know, or maybe those would be better for, um, for like the What Files channel or for the True Crime channel, where we can we, we can get a little bit more serious about it because with the with the missing cases, oftentimes there's there's not just death, but sometimes these people die horribly or their bodies are found and they're they're mangled and they're 
they're stripped naked and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we put that on the Y files and the algorithm, it already hates us. Um, Smatic, Smatic, sorry for this nerdy question, but what mic are you using? This is an Elgato Wave 3. Um, and back there on the set, we use the Shure SM7B that you see that everybody uses. But yeah, this is an Elgato. I like it. It's, you know, it's, it's USB, it's, it's USB, it's USB-C, and I just, I pop it back and forth between this and the editing station. It, you know, it works pretty well. Um, the Shure sounds great, but it's analog and you need the cloud lifter and you need the mixer and it's, it's, it, and then you need the interface to get it into the computer. It's a whole thing. This, you just plug it in. Um, the trick with it though, was the latency and the delay, which I think I think I've mostly fixed, but you might be seeing a delay, but that's because it's USB mic. Great question. Justin34, $2, great channel. Check out Mothman for a topic. That's another one that it's it's covered so much that I need to find something new, but it's a super interesting story. But look, if you're gonna if you're gonna post something on the tips line that's that's a well-known story like Skinwalker, drop a sentence in there about why I should look at it. The, because that, you know, it. Because if I look at the tips line, it's just a list. It's a list, and there's Mothman is in there over and over and over. But the, it's just people saying Mothman. So I know you want to see the story, but tell, give me a little something or a link to somewhere, to, to you know, just give me something to hang my hat on. Like with the Flux Liner, the 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 ARVs, the alien reproduction vehicles, which that was a story I had I didn't know about Mark McCandlish, the person who submitted that and i'm sorry that i forgot who you were i'm, I'm gonna email you i promise uh the person who submitted that they gave me a couple of links and then they wrote a sentence that said you should do the you should do this topic because it's really interesting but um you probably shouldn't because the government will kill you or it was something like that like you know be warned it was it was it scared me you know so if if you send me a tip and i'm frightened I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that a little bit more. Um, Dan the mannequin. Since doing this channel, have you personally had any contact from ET or unexplainable things? Love the channel. Keep up the good work. Um, I haven't. It, if you mean has, has Entertainment Tonight reached out for me to do something with them? They have not. They haven't reached out yet. But uh, but they they know how to get a hold of me. Danny Soul for two pounds. Hi AJ. Do a Rendlesham Forest episode. I have that. Maybe a third written. And the research is mostly done on that. Rendlesham Forest is a really good UFO story for the for you guys that don't know. That's you know that's one of these UFO stories where it's witnessed by a bunch of military folks on an air base. So it's not you know a couple of kids in the forest that come home with a story. This is you know these are senior military officials that are have UFOs landing on the base. The thing about Rendlesham Forest is there's not a lot of visuals. So if and this were just a podcast, you can tell the story and you just do theater of the mind. But with a YouTube video, I, you've got to have some intriguing, you know, fun visuals. Otherwise, this is my stupid face. Um, so that's that's part of the challenge with the older stories. But it's not a prohibitive challenge. It's Rendlesham Forest. We're going to we're going to get that one out there. Pablo Elizondo, 17, um, 25 pesos. I think those are pesos. Um Hey, what's my take on the Almec civilization? Loved it. Uh, four stars, two thumbs up. Uh, no, all, I, all those cultures, all the Mesoamerican cultures are super interesting. Probably worthy of their own video. Um, I talked about the Almecs a little bit in the episode about the Aztec death whistle, which goes back. That was one of the early, early ones, but it's really, it was a really fun episode because, um, if you don't know an Aztec death whistle is, it's like the worst sounding, it's a horrible sound. Um, but check out that episode. It's a short one. It's fun. Hecklefish actually built his own, um, death whistle and had it in the bowl. I was blowing it in the bowl. Lori Partridge for $1.99. Please more aliens, JFK, and secret societies. You got it. Aliens are always a hit on the channel. Um, JFK is one of my favorite conspiracy topics. That's one that there's just so much that is about picking the good ones. You know, I, 
sometimes I, I go back to JFK and I worry that it's it's overdone, but I don't know if it is. It, I think people would still enjoy it, especially especially if um, since I'm so interested in it, I I would think that would come across during the video. At least I hope that comes across that that I'm into this stuff. But a JF, <clears throat> like the uh, the film, I've watched it a dozen times. Every, all of those free documentaries on Amazon Prime that are that are that are clearly a dude in his basement making documentaries. Um, I watch all that stuff, all JF all JFK stuff. I love it all. Um, maybe we'll do the top five craziest conspiracies. I don't know, but I have thoughts on it. I don't, I wonder how YouTube would respond to that theory. I'm going to have to look, I'm going to have to look and see if there's context warnings on that. Secret Societies is working on a couple of those now. Um, one is sort of a skull and bones, the secret societies that are, they're secret, but they're sort of the, the the secret societies that get these young men into the into the the big secret societies like skull and bones i guess you would call like a a practice secret society you know because they're they're 18 year old kids that you know are eventually going to be in the in the illuminati um so that's interesting to me how you get these rich kids involved in the in the secrets in the illuminati and the secret societies um but a lot of them are are very debunkable now, other societies that are not necessarily secret, like um, Bilderberg and those kinds of groups, not really debunkable because those are those are legit and, in my opinion, legitimately dangerous, which is why I've kind of avoided them. Uh, Joker's performance is back for four ninety nine. dollars The Gosford Glyphs, also known as Karyong Hieroglyphs, are a group of approximately 300 Egyptian-style hieroglyphs located in Karyong, New South Wales. Perfect. Um, fun fact. Fun fact from Joker's performance. Thanks for that. James Nathaniel Lockhart, thank you for the $10. I appreciate that, James. Have a Merry Christmas. Georgia Fox Lover, $10 Canadian. Maybe they need to stop sending things to the Smithsonian to store. LOL. Love your show. Thanks. Um, yeah, they, sh they should. Uh, I had some B-roll, but I didn't have a chance to throw it in of the Smithsonian archives. And there's, there's buildings upon buildings and floors upon floors and, and basements and sub-basements all full of stuff. And I, there's one building that's just file cabinets keeping track of the stuff. So, you know, I don't know if there's a – if like if you find something, if you, like if you find a, a, the skeleton of a giant – you got to believe there's there's some group, some some shadowy government group out there that's aware of that, and jumps in. You know, like like when they when ET was found at Elliot's house and they they put the exterminator thing over it and they all the guys came in with the hazmat suits. Like they, I feel like there would be something like that if you find a giant skeleton, and then I guess that group takes it to the Smithsonian and hides it from the rest of us. Um, so I don't know if there's a way to avoid it. It's one of the problems with, uh, you know, government funding and government grants and all the scientific research. Again, there's a Y Files episode about um, the MIT computer predicts the end of the world, and um, that's about a study in the '70s that predicts the that the world is going to end and it it like the end is starts in 2020 and then by like 2034 it's over because of overpopulation and and the climate crisis but the theme of that video is that research was funded by the club of rome which is one of these secret societies that believes in depopul in in depopulating the earth by any means necessary any means is acceptable to reduce the population of the earth so the theme of that episode is you got to whoever's paying for the research, you have to sort of be aware of who's paying for it. So that if if you're if if you're you know an archaeologist, you're doing a dig in you know in the Ohio mounds looking for giant skeletons, but your funding comes from one of these government agencies, they're going to have a say in 
in everything you do. And, and certainly when you sign the paperwork for that grant, it's in there that, you know, you, whatever you find, we want to put our eyeballs on it and we're going to send it to the Smithsonian so they can lose it. Permo fit for $1.99. 25 years ago, I hiked the Grand Canyon down and up. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know that you were even allowed to hike it. I know you can ride an ass down there. I don't know if I'd ride an ass, but uh, Happy Dan travels for $2. Thanks for that, Happy Dan. Kathleen Anderson, 99 you guys should have your own major network show. I watch you daily and never get rid of Hecklefish. Uh, you know, his contract comes up every year, and we'll do a poll every year, and we'll see how it goes. Um, let's see what happens. They, they can't hear you, dude. They can't hear you. Um, but thanks, Kathleen. That's very nice of you to say. Who wants to do a network show anymore? This is this is way better. Um, Joker's performance is back with more uh, facts. I think you just typed the same fact you did before, but you added the S for whales. Is that what you did? You fixed. You spent five dollars to fix a typo. God bless. Corey Edwards, twenty five dollars. Thanks for that, Corey. Have a merry Christmas and thank you for supporting the channel. Couldn't do it without support like that. Nate O'Brien, hi Jen. You and AJ are doing great. The fact that you both met on Match gives me hope something other than a dumpster fire can come from online dating. Now, you see, this is this is how a shame becomes feminized, is I, I step to, you know, because I've talked about the aliens and the giants and all the, the mysteries. I step away for a second, and the wife takes over, and suddenly it's it's dating. and it gets, No, it's a, somebody asked how we met. Thing. Somebody asked how we met. And it gives so. me hope. That you I can stop find it. Love. <laughs> you stop it. All right. Well, Nate, here's to you, and I hope you find uh, that special someone. Happy Dan travels for another two dollars. Well, I mean, why send four when you can send two twice, right? Get your name up there twice. That's what I'd do. Chrome Guitars for another $20. Very generous tonight, Chrome Guitars. I appreciate that. I'd love a deeper dive on the double slit experiment. The implications are insane. It leads to much depth on the human experience and how it can be explained, how it can be expanded. Hecklefish should, should be exclusive to pre-recorded vids. Um, I don't know if I don't know if he agrees with that. They don't hear they don't hear you. They don't hear. Um, we covered the double slit in the simulation theory episode for one chapter. Um, but yeah, I'd like to go deeper on that. It's a really hard one to cover. You know, that was the simulation theory episode is, is one of my favorites, probably the one I'm most proud of, not because it's the editing is that great or my performance is even that good because it's all that is just fine. I think what's nice about the episode is it takes some very kind of chunky topics like simulation theory and, um, and, Neil Bostrom and 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 his paper and and all that kind all that all the the metaphysics as well as the quantum physics and kind of boils that down in kind of an easy to understand you know as best as I can do fun episode. Dan Bongino thought so. Got a cool shout out from him a week or two ago, and it, well, on that episode, Bob. Hadiz Games, $5. The Giants and the Megafauna were, went extinct at the same time from the Younger Dryas impact. Yeah, I mean, that's... It all happened then, didn't it? Younger Dryas? 13,500 years ago or so? I mean, I, every, like, third episode, you know, every second episode, lizard people. And look, I don't do it intentionally so the fish can get excited about lizard people. And I don't do it to sell T-shirts and mugs. Although, if you do want your Lizard People mug, go to shop at the wildfiles.com. We've got Lizard People mugs. We've got um, Snitches Get Stitches. We've got Hecklefish for President. The mugs are not expensive. We only make a couple of bucks. They make a great gift. If you want it to get to your house by Christmas, you should order right away. So that's shop at the wildfiles.com. Uh, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't specifically put Lizard People in there so I could do that promo. It just, they always show up so much so that I'm surprised. Like this week I was surprised, <clears throat> even a little bit annoyed. Um, cause, cause yeah, the, the flood myth is always there. So when I'm reading about a culture from a certain time, younger Dryas, and you, you inevitably get to the flood myth and I'm reading them I'm like, oh, okay. I was just, I was expecting that. 
I don't even need to know the culture to know that there's going to be a flood myth in there somewhere. It doesn't matter. But when I'm researching a topic and the lizard people keep coming up, they come up all the time. All the time. Little, little mucusy. I'm trying to choke that down so you don't have to listen to it. I even, I even calmed down on the lizard people content in the episode because it was getting bananas. And, and not bananas in a in a you know in a bit shoot rumble kind of way. Bananas like there are there are glyphs in in a, there was a find just outside Mexico City where they found allegedly giant skeletons. So I'm reading that and I'm like, that's fine. Um, I didn't include it because it was just it was just one line on that. But there was a whole paragraph about how they also found all this iconography and all the, you know, all this writing about reptilian humans and giant reptiles and humans like living together, mating with each other. It was, it was crazy. And it was crazy. Um, but I didn't, I didn't want to include it because it was, it just felt too far out of left field, but I'm consistently surprised at how often reptilians keep showing up in these stories. So, um, as Hecklefish knows, I'm not a huge believer in the reptilian theories. But, you know, I'm, I'm shifting a little bit because they keep coming up. Death Scythe, Scythe is back. And now mucus and now I'm burping. This is not professional at all. Um, you wouldn't know I did radio for 15 years. Say hi to Damien, Christy, AJ, Aiden, and Annie. Well, hi, Damien, Christy, AJ, Aiden, and Annie. How are you? Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Dave Edwards for $9.99. Love the Y files. I really enjoy the content and appreciate all the hard work that's put into your episodes. Thanks, Dave. And thanks for noticing the hard work. Uh, you know, these bags under my eyes, they don't just show up on their own. Jim, I mean, I was editing right up. I was, I was worked, I worked until about 2 a.m. on this episode last night. This morning. Uh, I watched an episode and a half of Andor to the third run through. And then I hit the hay and I was back up around eight, eight 30. Jen, what time is that? I was about around eight 30 and editing all the way through until five. The episode went up at six till five. So yeah, a lot of work went into it. Although if I'm honest, this week was the same amount of work as always. I just was late with it. So Jim N gel E bean day one. I don't. I, I wish I could get the etymology of some of these names. Some of them are really funny, but here's the thing with the names like Jim N Gel E Beans Dash Day One. Like I'm curious to know how that name com comes about. But what I'd like for these names is like a, a mouse over and like a tool tip, like a pop up that will tell me like why he has that name. I don't want to ask him. You don't want to ask people how they got their username because they'll tell you. And then you got to do the whole thing. I'd rather just mouse over and, and see what he means by that. Jim and Jelly Bean, day one, $5. Missed the episode, but we'll watch after this live. Hecky, hecklefish, hello. Um, he's going to try to say hello, but I don't I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's good. No, he's, he's, no, they can't hear you. Well, Jim, I hope I didn't spoil it for you. Well, there's not a lot of twists in this one. Ajax Slam Goody. See, that's, no, that's in. That's a great name. Five dollars. Did AJ like my Stanford, Kentucky alien invasion story? I thought you were talking KY. I thought you were giving us some personal details, but you meant Kentucky. Kentucky alien invasion story, most documented case ever with three women and one lady was killed, radiation, et cetera. I don't know that one. We'll have to put that on the tips line so I can remember that. I don't I don't know that one. But that's radiation is interesting. Whenever there's radiation in a UFO story, I might I, I kind of perk up because that's because now we're into science. If if a story is just an eyewitness. Eh, I don't believe you, but if there's radiation that's detectable and documented, I mean, that's interesting. Like there's a lot of radiation with the crop circle stories and that's something I'd like to cover. But again, crop circles is so, so done that I have to find the right angle, but maybe radiation is kind of, kind of leading me there. That's how the episodes get written is I get the subject and I research it and I start writing and I don't really know what I'm writing about until I get about halfway through. And then I go, oh, okay, I found the story. So maybe crop circles is one to just start start diving into it. Or maybe the KY alien. 
you know, the slippery alien story that uh, that Ajax wants us to do. Slippery alien. M. Christian Christensen for $20. Thank you for that. I grew up listening to Paul Harvey's rest of the story. Good day on the radio. That was a good for you youngsters. That was a good impression. Uh, Paul Harvey. Good day. Go. So I guess this would be a modern version. Always interesting. Um, I don't know. I, Paul Harvey was he was succinct. He was personable. Uh, he gave a lot of great information. I do not. I'm none of those things. But uh, but I take it as a compliment. Paul Harvey was one of the great ones. Sickosis 999, you should come down to the Ozarks and try to find the secret underground city and nuclear plant. Is there a nuclear plant underground in the Ozarks? I haven't heard that. I checked that out. The Ozarks looked nice on the, uh, on the Netflix show. Uh, they didn't cover the, the nuclear plant, though. Lester McDonald, $5 Canadian. Next episode, why is Hecklefish being suppressed? In this episode, that's yeah. He said he likes that idea. That's that's a great question. It's either YouTube suppressing him, or I've got the audio output settings all jacked up. Um, I'm leaning toward choice B. Scott DeWolf, twenty dollars Canadian. I remember in the '90s doing security and listening to Art Bell radio show. Any comments on Art Bell coast to coast? Art without Art Bell, there is no Wi Files. The Wi Files is. <laughs> Art Bell and um, Twilight Zone, in in my mind, that's the you know that's the the content, that that's the stories. Those are the ones that I like. The presentation, the inspirations for the presentation are actually Mister Rogers' Neighborhood and Pee Wee's Playhouse. So that would be the log line if you were pitching that to you know to producers in Hollywood. Log line's like a like a two sentence synopsis of what you're pitching, and the log line would be. Coast to coast slash the Twilight Zone slash the Outer Limits meets Pee Wee's Playhouse with a little dash of Mr. Rogers in there. If I had a bigger set, I would actually walk in. I'm not joking. I'm serious. I would walk in and I would change my shoes. I would do that every day. Maybe put on a sweater. Um, but what can you? Art Bell is the he's the he's the best that ever was at this and probably ever will be. I don't think you'll you ever get another one like him. You know, um, with all respect to George Norrie, who's a very nice man, I just, he's just not, it's just not the same. Ian Punnett, all those guys that filled in for art, they were all fine. But, you know, Scott, if you were listening in the 90s like I was, when you tune into art and he wasn't there, which just happened, you know, he wasn't a consistent guy, when, when Ian was on instead, weren't you like, oh, man, you know, it's it's Thursday. Where is he? Um, but, yeah, I don't think we'll get another one like him. We are going to do a road trip to go visit Art's grave and, and as soon as it gets a little warmer, you know, up in Prump, uh, Nevada. Pay our respects. Wolfer for nine ninety nine Fish Food Fund. All right. He appreciates that. He likes White Castle cheeseburgers. Um Remember when you're ordering White Castle cheeseburgers, you have to request the pickles because they only come on hamburgers. Okay, so that's a tip for you. Nick Nikki Gutowski for two dollars. Great episode tonight. They are so hiding things. They are. Why? You know why hide it? There were a lot. There were a few theories on it. Um, one of them was was racism, which I didn't really like. You know, the Moon Eyed people, I could see the racism there because it's Europe, it's, you know, 16, 16th century, 15th century Europeans, even 19th century Americans. You know, you can you can see that, you know, they weren't awesome to the Indians. They weren't like super amazing pals with the Indians. So I could see the racism there. But but now. I You know, I don't know why you would suppress information about. You know, about the Cahokia Mounds. Like, so what? There's an advanced culture there and the Ohio River. The, you know, the Mississippian cultures are finally starting to get some notice. Uh, you know, archaeologists certainly have been exploring them for a long time. But in, in venues like ours where we just kind of touch, just sort of do surface information, the Mississippian cultures are finally getting noticed. And 
you know, we're going to start doing more episodes about them. I'm kind of dipping my toe in with these last couple of episodes, but I, but you know, we're ready to go in full force with those cultures. There's a lot of great stories. Jack 499, do you believe we are close to disclosure happening maybe with the Artemis mission in 2025? I do not believe disclosure is happening anytime soon. Um, I just, I just don't, you know, they, we're now at the point where they'll do a congressional hearing like every couple of years. And it's, it's all over my feed, you know, that Congress is going to be talking about UFOs, but it's always the same thing. They bring in experts and researchers and people and uh, ask them a couple of stupid questions that Congress people ask because they don't know anything. And then the good questions they ask, the, the witnesses say, ah, well, you know, we'll save that for a closed session. But those are the questions that we care about, you know, so... They continue to do that as recently as last year. So I don't anticipate this closure happening anytime soon. Um, and then when you, when you have the Stephen Greer's, uh, the, the, the mainstream, like the, the elected leadership doesn't take him seriously or, you know, people like him, they don't take them seriously. So th they don't get invited to talk about that stuff. But I remember Stephen Greer's famous disclosure press conference at, at the national press club, I think it was 2000 or 2000, 2001, 2002. It wasn't later than that, but it was almost 20 years ago. I mean, it was a packed, it was packed with press, just a packed house, but there was hardly any coverage on it. And there was no congressional follow-up from the authorities with all that information. I mean, they brought all kinds of receipts. Nothing happened. That's 20 years ago. So here we are 20 years later, Jack. Um, no, I don't think I don't think anything happens with disclosure, not anytime soon. C D Stein 69. I see what you did there. 499. I live near a Cahokia Mound site. Believe it or not, in the late 70s, they used to allow people to sled on the largest mound that's over 100 feet. I believe that. Um I you know, I in the 70s they knew what the mounds were, but up until very recently, no one knew what the mounds were. They plowed over a lot of them. Um you know, a lot of the, the discoveries, like the one we talked about that happened in Alaska with, with the Giants and um, another one we mentioned tonight, which I think was Ohio, the stories are like, well, they excavated the mound and they found, but that's not really what they did. What they did was they bulldozed it, you know, to, to put in a park or a road. And they were like, oh, my God, there's pottery and you know, there's pottery in here. Kids have been sledding down this mountain for years. And, you know, there's, there's bronze stores in here. Uh, Yorkshire Patriot for uh, a pound 99. Thanks for that, Yorkshire. I appreciate that. V8 Vote with your own logo for $20. I appreciate that. Family of 10 here, eight kids here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my eight children. Hang on. I was thinking about that. It gets, gets me warm. Uh, but you love the Y Files, and, and we love all of you at V8 Vote. They all want merch for the holidays, so watch for a big order. Hey, we're watching. When orders come in, I can actually hear them. I haven't heard any during this live stream at all, which is not a good sign. Maybe we need to do another plug. Do you have eight children and don't know what to get all the rugrats for the holidays? Um, are their stockings empty this year and all you can think of is coal? Well, send yourself over to the shop.thewifiles.com and get them some... Uh, uh, do the kids drink coffee? Uh, put chocolate milk in it or whatever. Um, but we have some cool kid stuff there. I don't, if they're eight, I'm assuming that they're, you've got toddlers to normal size. What are they called when they're bigger? They're not adults, right? They're just, they're bigger little ones. We have kid sizes there too. Um, and if you check out the yfiles.com and look at the In the Wild page, there's actually some great pictures of kids wearing the hecklefish shirts and they've got tinfoil hats on. It's, I mean, it's amazing. So if you do place that big order V8 vote, I want to see pictures of that for sure. I'm not joking. I want to, I want to see, I want to see eight heckle, little happy hecklefish heads. Sean Parker for $5. Can you do a show on premonitions and future viewing? Yes, put that in the tips line. But, um, <clears throat> but give me an angle. Because premonitions and future viewing could be a lot of stuff. You know, I want to know, do you want to see like seers? Like Nostradamus was allegedly, I debunked him, but he, allegedly a seer where he looked into his magic mirror, you know, 
which is just a puddle of water, but it eventually became a mirror and he would, he would look into the mirror and that's where he would see um, the stuff. Do you want to see that? Or are we talking about people who are clairvoyant, who can who maybe, maybe they see things, maybe people dream about the future. So give me an angle, you know, do, you know, do some more of the work. You got, you got it started, you know, help me help you. Crazy old biker for $1.99. Where can I get a hecklefish? Love, um, you could have mine. You could have mine. Paranormal Unlimited for two pounds. Love your work. Would love a UK-centric episode. Um, the next UK-centric that I think we're going to do is the Liverpool Time Slips, which is one of my favorites. That city is bonkers with the time slips and all kinds of paranormal acti activity out of, out of Liverpool. So I think that's the next one. Um, but if there are specific stuff, put it in the tips line so I remember. Because this is, you know, you know how Americans are. There is America and then there's the other non-Americans. You know, we don't know. And what's worse is I'm from New York. So New Yorkers don't even know there's another country around them, much less another over there. You know, we, we just don't. Plus, you know, I'm a I'm a white man from New York, so I don't I I don't I don't listen to anybody. I do my own thing. Aperture Alpha for five dollars. Hey, love your show. Thank you for doing so many. Um, you should do an episode about the Tony B tiles. I hardly see anyone on YouTube talk about that. It's that's the second time that's kind of come up, which is cool because I'm working on that. Um, the th I can't find a I can't find a debunk for the, well. It's not really a debunk. You guys probably don't know the Tony B tiles, but these are messages that are written into the asphalt and um we think we know who started it some guy back in the late 70s um but it just became a thing and uh it's these weird messages about about jupiter i don't know uh we'll do an episode on it or if if i can do if i can get enough content for a whole you know 15 20 25 minutes out of it i don't know if i can um but I think there's an episode there about messages in the wild because there's, there's, you know, when we look at like, um, the latitude society, which is, that's also what that's, that's maybe in my top five favorite episodes on the channel. <clears throat> um, latitude society. I won't tell you what it go, go watch it later. Um, but the latitude society put messages all around San Francisco, in the street, in, you know, in sides of buildings. Um, so there, there could be an episode there about just, you know, mysterious messages in the wild. I'm liking that. Lawton Le Sieur, Le Sieur, Le Sieur, Lawton with an L, the third. Lawton Le Sieur, the third. For $5, why don't you move to buy monthly episodes and spend more time on content, possibly longer episodes, while also making life a little less stressful? Um, that's nice of you to, to think of me that way. Uh, I'm good. The I don't know how I can make them longer than a half hour. No one wants to sit at YouTube for more than a half hour. I, the ideal length, I think, is 15 minutes, 15, 20 max, but they've just... They've just gotten longer and longer, and I've just kind of kept with that. You guys seem to like the you know the longer ones, but I like them a little shorter. Um, yeah, life is a little stressful now, but it's only because we did this move and the studio is you know stuff and stuff is messy and we're still in boxes. But we're gonna be okay. We're getting help. Daniel's out there. He's writing some shorts for us. We're gonna enlist him to help with some research, for some episodes. I'm gonna I'm gonna send out a flare or a bat signal on the channel soon to see if anyone wants to research, write, edit, or help out with the, with the channel. Don't email me now. Just keep an eye out. There'll be a website you can go to and put information in, but we are going to be looking for help. And then Lawton and stuff will be easier. Um, you know, someone else can research, can write, edit, admin. I think I just have to sit there, read the teleprompter, smoke a cigar. Sitting pretty. Pablo Alessandro, 17, is back for another 25 pesos. Um, Pablo, it looks like a lot, but I feel like you're just dropping like $1.10 on me every time. I don't know what the exchange rate is. 
Just a dollar ten, dollar ten. I appreciate it. Police Navidad. John Hobart for nine ninety nine. I often comment on how much I hate government cover ups. What are your thoughts on the decades of NASA cover ups of the many structures on the Moon, Mars, Phobos, proven by unedited Apollo mission pics? That's a great question, John. And uh, going back to the moon landing issue, I have to be careful with the NASA stuff. Because just go search YouTube on just whatever. NASA, just search NASA cover-ups on YouTube, and you'll get the first few videos will be NASA, how NASA didn't cover anything up, how they're just crazy people. You know, you have to go on alt tech like Rumble and some of those for the research on that. But um, but my brother Gino just sent me some interesting data on the, the NASA, how NASA photoshops pictures of everything. And it, which is and it's obvious when you look at the photos, like they're just copy and pasting. They're not even doing a good Photoshop job of it. Um, I'd like to cover it. There's so much. The um, there's some there's some video that I've seen from the space station and even earlier than that, like shuttle missions, where I swear they're just hanging. These people are just hanging on wires, like they used to. It, like the late 80s, early 90s, whenever there was like a woman in space with her long hair, her hair was always like out, like, you know, like an Aquanet 80s fro. And, I, and that was like, they really got to sell it that she's in, you know, microgravity. But no matter what the gravity was doing, she's always got the fro. Like it just looked fake. They started putting them in ponytails now. They, you know, they know that we're onto them. But there's a lot of content out there about that stuff. I'm just worried about getting you know, get how the algorithm uh, ban hammer come down on me. A Patreon video will definitely do, and it'll be a short one, is about how the, the astronauts um, that died in the Challenger explosion are actually still there. And there's pictures of them. It's bananas. John, you're going to like that one because you're going you're gonna to like that one. Omar for $5. Do you know any stories about the Mayan calendar or the Aztecs finding temples already built? Um, the only stuff I know about the Mayan calendar is that it was really blown out of proportion in 2012. Where um, I remember everything was going to end. And because the Mayan calendar ends, so they knew that the world was going to end. But that was just a very clickbaity thing to do is the Mayan calendar ends, so the world ends. But the the mind calendar didn't end. It, it just that segment of it ended, and it started a new segment. Um, and I'm sorry if you already know this, but the, uh, the mind calendar is, you know, we've got days and weeks and months. The mind calendar has similar things based on the sun and the moon, et cetera. But they also have longer chunks of time that are measured according to the pre precession of the earth. So the end of the mind calendar was just the end of that epoch or whatever that chunk of time was called that was – it's either it's it's one it's, the two magic numbers are forty three thousand two hundred or uh, the thirty seven thousand five hundred. It's one of those, you know, the procession. Um, so that that's really all I can tell you about the mind calendar is that it is not that big of a deal, as far as I know. I could be wrong. As the Aztecs finding temples already built, I haven't heard that, uh, but I would like to read about that. Fun stuff is ha happening down there. Um, maybe a little further south than the Aztecs. Maybe we're talking more, you know, Inca territory down that way. Um, but now that we have infrared imaging and, and other imaging technology, they're finding foundations of huge cities in, under the canopy that, of the Amazon rainforest and, and structures completely built that, that, that nobody knew were there because they're so overgrown. But now that you can see through the canopy, um, all kinds of wild stuff down there. Could be a good video. Uh, Darth Cynical, FYI, I don't screen these. Jen puts them in the queue. I click it and I just read it hot. I just work hot. So if you say anything offensive or stupid, I'm just going to read it like Ron Burgundy. So be careful. Darth Cynical for $20. Thank you for that. Very generous. If you could visit any period in time and not die immediately from giant animals or someone sneezing on you, where and when you would go? That's that's a tough one. I'm assuming you mean in the past, unless in the future there's going to be giant animals, or I guess the sneezing could be then too. You know, I, I it, it'd be so hard to answer that because 
I'm one of those nerds that watches documentaries about any time, whether it's, you know, Younger Dryas or the end of the dinosaurs or just, you know, the Gettysburg Address. I watch all that stuff and and I can't help but get lost in in that fantasy of, oh man, I wonder what that's like. I wonder what that felt like. You know, there's that that one existing photo of the of Lincoln at the Gettysburg Address where he's kind of mingling with the troops. And uh it's 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 a fascinating photo to me. Because it's just it feels so so real. It's not the picture of him on the uh, you know on the five dollar bill or the one that you see in the White House. It's just a dude, a, you know, a dude hanging out with dudes, you know, trying to trying to cheer young men up that are terrified for their lives. Um, you know, that's uh, that's fascinating to me. And then going back even further, you know what 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 was it like to be there the day that Chick Shalhoub hit? The Yucatan Peninsula, you know, sixty-five million years ago. What what was that? What was that like? Like, I don't, I don't have the fantasy about you know walking around the you know the rainforest, you know, running from T Rexes or, or or whatever. I had this weird fantasy about about looking up and seeing that thing shoot across the sky, and then that flash of light, and then then the world, then the future of the world changes in that one instant. That'd be pretty cool to be there. Um, I guess I'm supposed to say uh, to go see the, the crucifixion of Christ. I guess you're supposed to do that. You know, assuming that happened, that I guess I would go watch that. But uh, but some of those more dramatic events, I, I I'd give anything. I often think about you know after you die. You know, some cultures believe that after you die, all the information is revealed, like all at once. And I sometimes think like when that happens, like oh shit, I'm dead. Oh, that's you see. I know everything now. I hope that's what happens because you need. I need an incentive for the death because if it's just if there's no if there's no you know end of life bonus or nothing, I, I don't want to do it. Henry Menard for a dollar. I appreciate that, Henry. Merry Christmas to you. Permafit's back for dollar ninety nine. Book Doctor Mary's Monkey on. See, I mean Permafit sending me more home, paying me for more homework. Permafit, you got to put them in the tips line, but I do appreciate it. I appreciate the support on the channel. Yorkshire Patriot for a pound 79. Hi from the, the UK, uh, Great Britain. Hi, Great Britain. Leslie H, $20. Thank you. That's very generous. What can you say about the orphan trains? I don't know anything about them. Sorry, Leslie. I can't give you $20 back. You put it out there and you wanted some insight on the topic. And I, you know, I don't know. But if you have information, send it in the tips line. I'll definitely look into it. Orphan trains, that intrigues me. James Saki, a Saki 666, Mark of the Beast, is the hat man included under the umbrella topic of shadow people, or is he a separate um, entity? He's included. The hat man's part of that. Because um, he people who have who see the who see shadow people, oftentimes it is the hat man. He's super scary because people who see him, they they don't see him as like a shadow. They see him as there, you know, as some people have said they, that he's touched them. So when we do that topic, we're going to talk about the hat man. Uh, great question. Fanatic Foragers back for two ninety nine Australian First Nation peeps. I think that's peeps of Australia are Earth's guardians. I can't deny that. All right, I'm just working down the list here. Um, we're almost through these, Jenny. She just she just laughed. <laughs> we're not, you're cackling at me. I'm cackling at you. Um, yeah, no, I've starred 190 and I'm not sure where you are um, on the well, list. Well, I think we're only going to go to 830 tonight. Okay, well then I need to cut off Super Chats now. I love that everybody's sending stuff in and we so appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for being such huge supporters of the channel. It's, it, it's amazing. Um, I, I think two minutes, two minute last call warning for the super chats and I will, uh, and then I can help you go through them if you'd like. You've got a lot. You've got at least a hundred to go through. All right. Well, we'll, we'll plow through them. Thank you for the super chats. They really help, um, keep the channel going. Um, you know, I, I could probably go longer if I can just get some food. 
Well, uh, maybe, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll order some food. I'll keep an eye on the Instacart on the uh, on the Grubhub. Okay. And then when food's nearing, then we'll just shut it down. Okay. All right. See, she's she's the boss. Um, so thank you for the super chats. A great way to support the channel is becoming a Patreon member. I'm go I got to do a plug, but I'm not doing the plug. It's not a greedy plug. It's it's really for you guys. The thing about this about YouTube with the super chats and the stickers and all that, they're great. The creator only keeps 45, 40 to 45% of that. YouTube gets the rest. And then YouTube takes another 24% for taxes. And then we get the rest from that. So on a $10 on, on David's, um, David's tip, I, I will only get about two, 250 of that. On Patreon, we keep a lot more of that of that money. So if you want to support the channel, it's a great way to do it. It's only $3 a month to become a member. You get to see the videos early. Um, not this week, you didn't, but normally you see them a, a couple of days early. As I get more and more ahead and we get more help, the videos, as soon as they're done, they'll be on Patreon. So if the fantasy is to be six weeks ahead on Wi Files videos, I'm going to put them all on Patreon. You'll have it all there before anyone gets it. Um, and that will also coincide with the time where we're, we're going to do these uh, Q&A sessions like we're doing. We're just kind of shooting the breeze. And then afterwards, we'll do Patreon only for just Patreon members because it, it then I can interact a little bit more. You, there's no super chats there. It's just hanging out. And, um, and at the higher levels of Patreon, you'll be able to jump on the live stream as well. So if you want to support the channel, that that be would love to have your support. David wants to know about the Las Vegas shooter lone gunman, or is there more? I don't want to say too much because I don't want to get in too much trouble. I believe there is more. And since you asked that question, David, I think you know what I mean. But yes, I believe there is more. And I believe there's a specific reason why we, my, in the mainstream, we don't know about that. I think that's a political reason. Jar Laxel for $1.99 super sticker. Thank you for that. Big Daddy PD, four ninety nine. Have you ever heard of the Hutchinson effect? On zero point energy, he is called the man scientist. Um, man, it sounds familiar because I did so much research on zero point for flux liner, but I don't know specifically a Hutchinson effect. But um, but I I think I think a video, a whole an entire video on zero point could be a thing to do. Because there's so much there's so much there, and I'd like to get into more science stuff. So maybe that we when we start doing the Monday sort of the Monday mainstreams. Maybe we'll do zero point. Although they killed all those scientists. Um, it was funny. There was uh there's there's some there's some great um Wi Files fans in on Reddit that that repost the videos, which I'm grateful for in uh in subs like high strangeness, conspiracies, UFOs, the usual suspects. Um I used to post the videos in in those subs i don't have to do that anymore because other people are doing it so that's that's great i'd rather i'd rather people who enjoy the content post it than me just looking like i'm some idiot who just come you know come watch my stupid channel i'd rather have fans saying hey i saw this this was this was amazing um so and by the way uh the wife house has a sub if you want to go on there and, and hang out with us also discord let me put the discord link in there And follow the Y Files on social media, OMG the Y Files on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. I hardly ever post on Facebook. Um, what was I saying? I forgot. Lion Fury 1985, $5. Love the channel. You and your crew's dedication to truth is what keeps me hooked. So much mis disinformation out there. Thank you. Keep it up. Uh, so much mis disinformation. What's funny is a lot of the stuff out there that's prepared. Uh, that's perpetrated as truth is actually misinformation. We won't get into that now. KJ Bullet for $2. New subscriber. Welcome to the funny farm, to the madhouse, to the booby hatch. Instant fan for life. Great videos. Thanks, KJ. I appreciate the support. Thanks for hanging out on the uh, on the live stream tonight. Temporal Coins. That's a cool name. And you got your own logo. I like it. $10. I love in, so you love Ancient Apocalypse, the episode where they had Turkish religion that mirrored the biblical Ark story. We we're talking about it on, this, on the Discord Voice channel. Yeah, every, they all have it. They all have the flood myth. Uh, but yeah, ancient apocalypse. If you like the Y files, you're gonna you're gonna love that. 
very slick editing on that. A heavy handed, but it was very slick. Jamie Assad, good to see you again, Jamie. Thanks for the nine ninety nine. dollars uh, West D, $5. Ever think of doing 30 minute vids with four or five short stories that don't merit a whole video? Yeah, I do it sometimes. Um, pr pretty, I, you know, when the video about the Warrens, I mean, it, it felt like a video, it felt like an expose on Ed Warren and his proclivities. But it didn't start out that way. It really started out as like the five most famous Warren cases is really all it was because they're cases that everybody knows, you know, the conjuring and Annabelle and all those. So that was that was just a listicle that was packaged in a Wi file package, is all it was. Um, and there's a few of those. It at the very beginning of the channel, the listicle episodes were very listically, you know, it was just hecklefish would read it, would read the item and I would do two minutes on it and that we would just do that. But since then we have done listicle episodes. I just try to package them so that it doesn't feel like another one of those, you know, like you're watching looper or one of those dopey channels. So yeah, Wes, so we, we do that. And we may do that like with the, uh, the urban mysteries messages in the cement that will, that's a listicle episode. We'll just package it in a way that's not quite so cheesy. Cody Castor for $5. Any shows involving Nibiru in the works or the towns where the population suddenly vanish? Um, yes and yes. Nibiru's, I'm working on that now. Nibiru Planet X um, rolled into that is the a theory, which I thought was really interesting, that, that we're actually a binary star system and that around, that so we go around the sun, which you may not know that, but that's true. But not just around the sun, but the, our sun is part of a binary system with a brown dwarf that's way, way, way out there. Because binary systems can be huge, don't forget. They don't, they're not like right there. Like we did that story about Zeta Reticuli, and that's a binary system. The stars are a light year apart. So that's, gravity is, is serious. So the theory is that we're in a binary system with a brown dwarf, and that every like 52 million years, Cat global cla cataclysms happen. And, and there's another cycle that's every like 20 million, 12 million. There are millions of years of different sizes. And they coincide with crazy stuff happening on the Earth. And now we're not talking younger Dryas 13, 14,000 years ago. I'm talking millions of years ago. The Chicxulub impact and um, the, uh, the other extinction events. There was the great extinction event that happened 120 million years ago. And the theory says that because we're in this binary system with this brown dwarf that we really can't see, its gravity is dragging debris from the proto-universe, from like the early, early universe, the early solar system. It's just dragging debris around in this huge orbit. And then every X millions of years, our solar system passes through that debris field and it just causes all kinds of chaos on the planet, like just like chaos. So I think that would be a really fun episode to do. It just it's hard to find details on that. But Nibiru could be part of that, you know, things in the solar system that may be there, but we don't necessarily see. Um, and population suddenly vanishes. That's always a good one. You could be talking about the Roanoke Island disappearance. Um, things like the Mary Celeste, I think, could fit there. You know, maybe maybe that's a listicle episode of vanishing people. You know, if you have a specific one, Cody Caster, then put it in the tips line. Let me see it. Pablo Alessandro's back for 65. You upped your pesos, amigo. I appreciate that. Hi, just wondering if you got my tips. I got it. Elongated skulls. Yes, all max. Amazing channel. Thank you, Miss Hecklefish. Um, love to hear more about your wife's new channel. Uh, she, she could, I guess she could talk about it. Uh, Jen will talk about the channel in about 20 minutes when I when I get to Grubhub. Yeah. Yeah, she's holding up the, the grub hubs. Yeah, show them what a, that's show them what a producer does. Yeah, that's so that's what I see down below. Grub, grub hub. All right. So when when I step away to uh to order dinner, uh, Jen can talk about the new channel. Um, elongated skulls. A, a lot of folks you'll see attribute those to aliens, and maybe they are, but most of those can be debunked. As, uh, you know, a lot of those cultures, Mesoamerica, uh, I mean, you're tipping in pesos, so I'm, I, don't, I don't know how much I'm going to teach you about Mexican history. 
but a lot of those cultures would um would wrap the baby's skull in you, you usually take a board and and like two boards and press the skull and tie tied around the baby's skull so that it grows into that shape. Ancient Egyptians did it too. Um, some think that King Tut maybe had that. But if you look at some other pharaohs, they definitely had weird stuff going on. So they don't know if it was the elongated skull or if it was just inbreeding that caused some kind of deformity. But you see it all over the world with a lot of cultures. Uh, you know, And the Asian cultures had the foot binding. So there's a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of that stuff throughout throughout history. Melissa Taylor, Taylor, thank you for the $5 super sticker. Lily the Golden, $49.99. I wish Hecklefish was here. Uh, yeah, he, I can't hear him. Christopher Smith, $20. Thank you. That's really helpful. Now? F phi or phi? Uh, phi is the Greek letter, but that's spelled with an I. So that's not you. You're phi? Did you clarify if the pictures in the latest episodes were real? If you mean the pictures of giant skeletons, those are those are not real um, because there are no such things. Um, if there are, the Smithsonian took them. No, those were just those are just fun pictures I found. And and look, fine between you and me, it's just us talking, right? It's just you and I. I sometimes feel guilty when I put photos in there that that are that are hoaxes. But they're just so fun. I mean, were, did you see the the one with the guy in the hard hat? He's kind of looking up at the camera, and he's just he's like got his elbow on the giant, and the skull is like as big as a coffee table, and he's just kind of chilling out. I, I mean, how can you not use that? You're talking about giants. How can you not put that in there? But no, that wasn't real. I'm sorry about that. Um, MX Margaret Zhao Zhao for seven ninety nine Australian. Hey Jay, nice video. Thanks. Just wondering how long does it normally take to make a video? Um, about a week or so, start to finish, if you include the writing, um, editing. It, it it takes about an hour per minute to edit a ballpark. Some are longer, some are shorter. But if it's a 20-minute episode, it probably took me about 20 minutes to edit, uh, 20 hours to edit. Uh, the writing, the writing, sometimes the writing just, it just flows. You know, you just... There's the muse is there or I got enough sleep or whatever it is. And the, the words come out and, you know, in six hours I can have a script. Some weeks like this one, it just won't happen. And you can't, you can't force it. You can't force creativity. I, I've tried on this channel and I could tell you which videos I did that. Um, Janoy or Hanoi uh, Kresva for $2 Tartaria and World's Fairs would be a great topic. I agree. Um, I, I just have to find the, the narrative with Tartaria because that's an urban legend, but it's a new one. So you've got the mud flood, you've got Tartaria as the global empire, you've got the, the world's fairs and the architecture, and then you've got the suppression of the information by all the world's governments. Those are really four urban legends, and there's a couple other ones, but they all kind of feed into you know the kingdom or the empire of Tartar. But they're not they're not connected yet. This is we're you know, we're watching an urban legend evolve. So hey, maybe we can connect them. You know, maybe, maybe we just, you know, let maybe we just connect, we just find a way to connect them and we become part of the urban legend. We just become part of the the culture. Kevin A for five dollars. I'm back on Patreon. Well, welcome back. When I joined the channel, it had less than five thousand subscribers, but I obsessed with it. Now it has nine hundred and forty one thousand. Can't wait to celebrate one million. You and me both. Well, things have slowed down the last four to six weeks, but I, I think we're going to hit it maybe in January. Uh, we, Jen and I were hoping to hit it for New Year's, but uh, it's it's too much of a long shot. But I can't believe, Kevin, you were – I mean, I I recognize Kevin A. from the early days of the channel, but I didn't know if you're the Kevin A. because I think you had a different icon back then. But uh, I remember those 5,000 subscriber days fondly. I used to answer every comment that came in, every single one. I, I prided myself on in it until we hit about 25,000 subscribers. But up until then, I answered every single comment on every single video every single day. Uh, Jeremy, 1904, 4.99. Hey, AJ, have you heard of the Little Green Men alien encounter in Kentucky back in 1955? Um, I heard about it just a little earlier today. 
but that that was that was the first time I th I think if if you're talking about the same one. But if you have a, a link or details on that, then send it in the tips line. Tom F O X for two dollars. Port of the Hell House in Gary, Indiana. A great show. I don't know that one. Um, I do love a Portal to Hell story. You know, uh, something like Mel's Hole. Everybody loves to know what's going on in Mel's Hole. I do love a Portal to Hell story. And there's a couple of different Portal stories that I'm looking at that are fun. So um, Gary, Indiana is not one of those. So so send me a link. I'd like to, I'd like to learn about that. James is back for $8. Pine Gap NSA based in Australia is a spooky place. Lots who work with deets and tips. I'm going to look for that. You know, uh, it, the United States gets most of the blame for being, you know, that the NSA spy, you know, authoritarian agency. And the United States deserves that blame. They do. But remember, you've got the five eyes. It's not just the U.S. The Australia is one of those eyes in the five eyes, which is not five guys. That's hecklefish like that. That's the that's five guys and fries. Robert McVeigh for nine ninety nine. Thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Your stories are becoming more epic. Well, I'm sorry that they disappointed you earlier, but I'm glad we're improving. I second a Randall Shim Forest episode. All right, it's coming. Jack one two three four. Let's. I bet that's your that's your email password, isn't it? That's your, or that's your luggage password. Nine nine one ninety nine. I'm with Lori. We need a JFK episode. Love the videos. Thanks, Jack. All right, we'll do JFK. I like that one. Blackout, no C, and a zero. Four ninety nine. You might want to check your audio mic sync offset within the OBS streaming software. Okay, tech support coming through, and you're paying me for tech support. That doesn't seem fair. What we should do, Blackout? You do a live stream, and I will super chat that back to you. Um, if the audio is out of sync, I can't do any, I can do zero about it now. Um, but I do have the timing settings adjusted as close as I can get. I can take another look at that, but there's not the heck of a lot I can do. Um, cause this goes through, I go through OBS and then OBS goes through virtual, like a virtual camera and virtual audio. The audio is also on USB. So that's, I've got latency there. Then OBS goes through the Streamlabs wrapper. The Streamlabs wrapper, more latency. That kicks that off the StreamYard for distribution, more latency. And again, a and it's a virtual camera through the browser, so even more latency. And then to YouTube for more latency. So I'm doing the best I can. But thanks for trying to help out, Blackout. I appreciate that. Dirt Rascal for $1.99. Any thoughts on Noah's Ark? Love your channel. Thanks. Um, I... If whenever there's a documentary about finding Noah's Ark, I'm on it. You know, if Mount Ararat, I I love that stuff. Um, you know, every time someone clickbaits me that they found evidence of the Ark, I'm all over it. So I, you know, I love the Bible stories. I'm not a really religious person. I just love the stories. So thoughts on the Ark, you know, I you know I don't necessarily think that God told Noah to you know load them in two by two. But there's an awful lot of flood myths that talk about an omniscient being or a godlike species or people coming down and warning regular folks that it's going to get wet. So, you know, build a boat. And you just, it happened. It's all over the place. In today's video, when I talked about flood myth, the B roll I throw, put up there was we did Turkish, Indian, Japanese, Egyptian. And a couple of arcs, you know, so I tried to cover all the cultures. So, you know, I don't take the Bible stories literally, but I believe that, I believe that flood happened. Steezy21 for $10. Thank you for that. Uh, I understand that you want to bring something new to these topics. However, I ask that you don't discount how well you do these. That's very nice of you. Enjoy the fact base and you leave it up. That's very nice. Thanks, Steezy. I appreciate that. Um, I still want, I still want to bring value. You know, I still want you to have a reason to, to check it out. Not just, you know, my take. It's nice that my take is enough, but I, I don't think it's enough. I think I need to do more. Christopher Smith, thank you for the $20. Super helpful. Uh, Commentary Central, $5. Thanks for all you do. You're welcome. If you could solve one conspiracy, which would you choose and why? Oh, that's impossible to answer. Because you want to know about the aliens, of course. Right? Roswell. Because I don't think there's 
I mean, JFK would be cool to know, but I, when if I had to choose between the, a dead president and, and Roswell, I don't care about JFK. I want to know about the alien. Uh, I'd like to know what's going on, on the far side of the moon. You know, there's a lot of stories. There's whistleblowers that said they saw pictures, photographs from the far side that had structures on them. I even used a couple of clips in a couple of episodes. Um, and uh, and if you follow Stephen Greer in his disclosure uh, videos, that, or if you tune into Gaia, you'll see videos about that. I would like to know about that, what's going on on the moon. So if I had to choose a conspiracy, it would probably have something to do with outer space or aliens, not people, because who cares about cares about people? Um, yeah, I'm watching the, I'm watching the time, Jenny. I'm going to, I'm going to get my food in 10 minutes. Concrete, uh, concrete and concrete in my veins. All right. I got it for 279 Canadian. Nome, Alaska, uh, UFOs and the FBI and people missing. Uh, I don't know the specific story that you're talking about there concrete, but I, but Alaska comes up in all of these stories. Um, it was it the Ingo Swan episode? It might have been the Ingo Swan episode where the men in black actually abducted him with permission to Alaska to look, to view a UFO, which could be the same story you're talking about. But uh, that's in the Ingo Swan alien bases on the moon if you want to check that out. I, I keep bringing up the episodes, and it sounds like I'm um, doing a pitch. You know, like speaking of Alaska, we have a great episode. I'm not – it just – happened, you know, you're asking, we're on the channel. Uh, if I can give you something to go look at, I'll, I'm going to go do that. That's, that's all this is. If I wanted to do a pitch, I would say that, you know, Christmas is coming and it's hard to find things for your family. Every year comes, comes and goes, and you spend all these weeks stressing out what to get them, what to get that man or woman in your life that has everything, what to get your eight children that are constantly screaming and they're on the machines and, and all the things they do. Give them something special this year. Give them the gifts of the Y Files. Go to shop.thewifiles.com. Uh, pick up a, a Lizard People coffee mug. We've got those. I don't. I was going to say we have them on sale, but we don't. They're not on sale. But you can get ten percent off anything you want with uh, this promo code. Promo code Lizard People. Ten percent off everything in the store. That's Lizard People. One word. So that's shop.thewifiles.com. Help support the channel. Um, Sean Calloway for $20. That's very generous. Found this awesome quote that made me think of your channel and many of the people featured in your videos. Paranoia is a very comforting state of mind. If you think people are out to get you, it means you think you matter. That's interesting. Um, especially in my case where people ask me if I'm worried that folks are coming to get me and I, I said, I'm not, I don't, I, no one, no one cares about me and my stupid channel. So, uh, so yeah, I think you're onto something there. Thanks for that generous tip. Tori Grant for 999. Sorry to go off topic. Uh-oh, here we go. But can you talk about what you did before the Y Files? Were you a sports commentator? I was not a sports commentator, but I've worked in <coughs> I worked in radio and voiceover and TV and and all kind all kinds of stuff like that. I don't know if this is your first live stream, Tori, but I but I've gone into my resume a couple of times. I'm not gonna do it this week because I hate hearing it come out of my face hole. But uh, but maybe maybe if we do this next week, I'll I'll give that speech again. Or maybe you know maybe I just have Hecklefish do it, and when someone asks me, I just have him do the whole thing, and I can you know I can go refill my coffee. Isaac is a bull for twenty dollars. Thank you for that. I dreamed about a ship. Actually, two drew it to detail when the with the you see. Ron Burgundy, I'm just going to read it. And if you have the spelling and grammar issues, and I sound stupid, that's us. Okay, that's not all me. That's the two of us. So I dreamed about a ship. Actually, two. Drew it to detail. So I'll, I'll add the punctuation. Drew it to detail with the column through the ship. I really freaked out. My diagram was so detailed. Honestly, it was scary. This was before your video. I still have the drawing. Yikes. Email that in, Isaac. I'd like to see that drawing. Maybe you had a vision, you know. And I don't want to scare you. I mean, I want to scare you a little bit because that's kind of fun. But people sometimes wake up from dreams of dreaming about a ship and drawing it. And it turned out they weren't really dreaming. They were abducted and they were remembering. So I don't know. I don't know. Check your orifices for sores. Music Gizmo, 7-Eleven. I just wanted to say hi. Love your channel. When I'm having a rough day watching your videos, helps so much. Oh, that's very nice. You have the perfect voice and character for storytelling. Keep doing the awesome business. Thank you so much, Music Gizmo, not 7-Eleven. It's very nice of you to say. Tech Grub, $5. You're you the best buddy. 
Thanks, man. You're not so bad yourself. Lily the Golden, four ninety nine. Have you heard of Milton William Cooper? I haven't. Ah, uh, he's the author of Behold a Pale Horse. Yes, I have heard of him. Um, he may be an interested person to do an episode on. Uh, he may be. I don't know if I can get away with everything in that book. I read that a long time ago, so I have to refresh myself on it. But uh, but I'm going to take a, another look at that. Sid's vlog. Everyone go check out Sid's vlog for $2. Can you cover mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle? Yes, I can. I've not done that because it's so common. So my twist on the triangles was I did the Nevada Triangle. See, I'm going do, calling back another video again. Um, there are triangles like the Bermuda Triangle all over the world. Everyone has a different number. I've seen 13. That's a fun number. Um, but but they're all over, all over the world. So Bermuda clearly has one. You've heard of that. You typed it. Then there's Nevada has one, but they're all over the place where people, aircraft, boats, they all disappear. So rather than do Bermuda Triangle, it might be fun to do all the triangles and how they connect and maybe what causes that. 104, Arbiter Zen signed $5. Mahavar Babaji, 2,000-year-old enlightened master, supposedly still alive in the Himalayas, taught many famous gurus such as, uh, such as those. Um, I'd like to learn more about that. I don't, I don't believe in it in that. I want to, I mean, that's, I, you know, I, I, I want to believe in that, but, uh, but I don't, but I, but I'm interested in, in that story. You know, if enlightenment brings immortality, what, you know, why does the Dalai Lama die every 80 years or does he not, maybe he's still on his journey. Maybe he's still walking toward the light. Uh, TCH for $1.99, do you do the voice of Hecklefish? No, I, he does his own voice. Who does your voice, TCH? Jesse Kearley, Carly, $20. Wow. Uh, hey, I was wondering if you could do a video on the demon house of Gary Indiana. Gary Indiana is all over the chat tonight. I didn't know it was that kind of place. Um, yes, I can, Jesse, but you have to put that in the tips line because I'm going to forget. All right, I'm, I'm going to go place a dinner order. I'll I'll leave you I'll leave you guys with Jen for a minute, and then I'll come back and uh, and, and get through as many super chats as I can. And you're hearing me, okay, Jen? I'm see. I'm uh, this is why Hecklefish isn't working because you shouldn't be hearing me. Now you should be hearing me, but you're hearing me like this. I got work to do, but <laughs> you'll get it done. All right. So I am officially cutting off super chats. So hopefully we can get through the rest of them when he got, when he gets back from ordering his Grubhub. Uh, let's see. Army Nation. Hello to you too. Uh, Blue dog ley lines. That's a really interesting one. And that's been on our list. I think he's trying to find the story. We, we talk about that a lot. Um, Twisted Man, I don't know what's for dinner. AJ's at the studio and I am at home. So I don't know what he's getting for dinner. Tracy Ains, love to you too. Thank you, Oklahoma. We like that. Um, let's see. <sighs> Little moment, I think. Little Moments was asking about the guy who flew over Area 51 in his plane and called Coast to Coast AM. I feel like we did a deep dive into that on a past on a past after files. I'm not sure. I would have to ask AJ about that one. Uh, Time Lords, yes, my Christmas tree should be outside on my front door, um, but we just moved in as you can see, and I don't have uh, a hook on the front door yet. Let us meet the kitty. This is one of our boys. This is Monroe. He's our fluffy one. Gary Daniel, hello from California. Um, so, you know, I don't think he wants to be held. Arda, no, I am not Hecklefish. Hecklefish does his own voice. He's a big old pain in my butt sometimes, but he's great. So, uh, yeah, he just showed up one day on the front porch like uh, 
like a baby that got dropped off in a basket. Uh, the cat, <laughs> it depends by design else if the cat got along with hecklefish. There's actually a very funny um, outtake in one of the early videos where Monroe was up on the desk, like sticking his paw in hecklefish's bowl and heck is saying hey hello does does anybody see this what's going on here so um i think the fact that he talks freaks out a little bit so uh thanks all right all right where are where are where are we we got jesse got concrete in my veins do we get to brady uh brady campbell for 4.99 cent a new D.B. Cooper suspect to the tip line with a link. It's compelling in your opinion, not as supernatural, but a mystery nonetheless. I'm going to look for that link. Um, I have a, and there's, there's someone floating around the, the YouTube mystery universe right now that says that they know who that is. So I'm curious to see if, if we have the same guy. Brandon Bentley, always good to see you. Love the channel immensely. Good to see you as well. I work in aerospace. And what we are making for the Navy and why has, has made us all at work question what is real in this world. I'm a huge skeptic, but we see with open eyes now. You see what he did there? He told us nothing. So I don't know if, now, I don't know if Brandon's legit or not, or if he's a Richard Doty type. Brandon, you got to tell us what you mean. Um, I look, don't, <clears throat> don't talk to me about clearance because you just violated your, your clearance. So you got to tell us what's going on at an aerospace. Like which one? I mean, if you were, if you're a Lockheed, if you're a Lockheed, you got to tell us what's going on. Lockheed is always at the center of these stories. Christopher Snyder for ten dollars. Did you see they created a son a few days ago? I didn't see that. I don't know where you mean. Um, I saw they maybe created a mini black hole. I didn't see the sun. Are we talking about CERN? CMC IT Industries, $5. Awesome show. Thanks. To whoever asked about the web series, please contact me. There you go. Making connections in the chat. Um, you know, and that that gentleman, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. You were looking for a date. Maybe just post your stats in the chat and uh, you can find yourself a hookup, you know, right in the White House chat. You know, um, ASL. You guys remember, remember how we used to do that back in the day? That's how it was done back in the day. Permafit's back. Let's see if there's going to be more homework. Corruption, the mob, government, and Nazis, JFK. Look up Whitney Webb. Yes, you, you, you want me to get into Whitney Webb. That, that's, that's for sure. She has a lot of interviews uh, the last few months. Question, where do the mobsters go? I don't think you're being rhetorical. I think you mean it. Um, but yeah, if we do the JFK store, when we do it, um, the mob will play a major role in that. Uh, I mean, that's, that's my theory is, is the, is the mob and the, and the, sort of the intelligence community with, with president Johnson at the top of that. That's, that's what I think happened. Um, all right. So we're getting through these. I see we're losing a few people, so that's good. That means, that means. I means everybody's yeah, everybody's satisfied. Michael Kessler, thirty ninety nine Australian. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Daniel Pearson, I'm a lifelong journalist, and people always ask me, um, and we'd all like to know about you. When and how did you learn to conduct in depth research, and how do you begin an episode? Um, I I, <clears throat> I don't think I learned how to do research. You know, maybe you know, maybe maybe I did. I'm just I've always been an uh, a, an internet tech guy, so I'm always you know in search engines. Whether it, back to Alta Vista and before, so I'm always searching for stuff. Um, so I know how to, I know how to find information, and I also know the you know the kind of the the, the darker corners in the in internet where to find stuff that you can't find in Google or DuckDuck. So I think that helps is just kind of knowing where to go, you know, being a web walker, you know, as far as journalism, you know, I don't know if I'm doing it correctly. You know, I, I remember they used to teach us the stories had to have the who, the what, the where, and all those. 
but I, I, I approach the stories more like a screenplay than, um, you know, than an article, you know, where I, <clears throat> I don't know how, how journalism is specific, specifically taught, but certainly now where depending on what medium you're in, you're taught to lead the story with the most important information up top and it kind and kind of whittle it down from there, you know, cause you're losing people. And <clears throat> that's prevailing wisdom with YouTube as well as you front load your great content up front. And because you, cause no one watches to the end of the video. So you front load it. And then, um, and then as people drop off, it doesn't matter because your content is getting watery and water more watery. I try not to do that. I try to, let you know what's coming in sort of in the T's in that front in the front part before the logo and then take you through the three act structure and hopefully the final act is bringing some logic and some science to the story if i can and if i can't then just admitting that and that's that's how i approach it so i don't really approach it like a journalist i'm more like a screenwriter you know, stumbling through the best I can. The truth is out there for $1.99. Family Secrets of Russ Baker, Touches of JFK. I don't know that one. Permafit's back. $1.99, Suspicious Observers, channel every morning, FYI. Okay. I don't know that one. Warren Manning for $5. Um, there's a mount, an African word in Zimbabwe, the mountain that swallows people. I think would make for great story and content. Send that in the tips line, Warren. I like a mountain that swallows people. That'd be cool. Mount Shasta has all that weird stuff. It definitely, it, Mount Shasta swallowed people. Mount Shasta, there was that one story where the the kid thought the kid was abducted by the clone of his of his grandmother. Remember that one, John? For ten dollars, what are your thoughts on the Lacerda files? I don't know that one. The other people swear on some sort of cave entrances. Most of us it's sus fringe, but I believe the fact. Uh, it shows up in so many unrelated theories. If something shows up in a lot of theories, I, I start to believe it a little bit. Um, so I understand that. But Lacerda Files, I don't know. And I've said this on the live stream before. Remember, I'm not an expert in these subjects. I'm not a journalist. I'm not a writer. Uh, I consider myself an entertainer who's interested in mysterious topics. That's, you know, that's really what I do here. I'm not, the experts are really you guys. You come up with the stories. You come up, you send me down the rabbit holes. It's, you know, it's really all you. The discerning hiker for $5. Do a show on the evolution and birth of hecklefish. <laughs> um, back when he was caviar. Heavy amp for $5 in New Zealand. Bro, actually, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Michael Kessler for $14.99 Australian. Do you think it's possible that some of these mysteries, such as UFOs, cryptids, or others, may involve aspects of our reality that we may not or could not understand? Um, I don't know. I mean, I know what you're asking, and I'm not, and that's not a cop out answer. I, you know, I, I don't think so. I think if there are cryptids, they're in our reality. And if there are UFOs, they're in our reality. Um, you know, aspects of our reality, it really depends on what you mean. I mean, the UAPs, the UFOs, we see them, you know, so they're there. You know how I feel about cryptids. I'm not a huge cryptid fan, um, but people see them. But a reality that we can't understand, sure, that's a lot of it. Feoda for $5, check out R.A. Boulay's great book, Flying Serpents and Dragons, for more on the Anunnaki. I'll definitely check that out. You know, I, Hecklefish has got the Zechariah Sitchin's books up there. So we're always looking to add to the Anunnaki library. <clears throat> Anthony Goodley, always good to hear from you, my friend. Today, a user mentioned the Y files in a big channel I can help with. You should mention the Wi-Fi in a big channel. Oh, big channel you help with. Anthony, what channel? What channel? This is like working in aerospace. I work in aerospace. I work on some stuff that would blow your mind. I mean, we work on stuff that makes us question our very reality. That's it? What channel? Brian Doogie for $2. Thank you for that, Brian. Pablo's back for another 25 Mexican pesos, Princeton Manuscript Archives. I don't know that one. Um, we, I'd like to do something on the Yale Library. Because that has, the Yale Library has, has some crazy stuff in there. The Princeton one I assume does as well. But I'm not familiar with it. I have to look at it. Steve Hart. Oh, got his, 
see where the food is. We're doing fine. Steve Hart for five dollars. Intriguing things are awesome. I agree. Thank you. Loving sharing. All is the goal where we super create in love. You are the big step in this direction. Thanks, Steve. I mean, as I read that, I could and I could just I can hear the sitar music. I can hear it. Bow, bow. Turtle M for five dollars. Love your show. I'd love to see an episode on the Hudson Valley. Flap. My whole family saw a UFO right in front of our car during that. A lot of people have said that. That's Hudson Valley's come across the tip sign a lot. Um, that's, I mean, it's that's one of the more grounded UFO stories. Oops, I, we can't hear him. Go. All right, he's gone. Michael Hayes for dollar nine nine. He loves the channel and thanks us for our time. Thanks for hanging out tonight, Michael. Ryan Wallace for five dollars. You're a weirdo in a good way. I, okay, I could live with that. I think you're unique mostly in your ability to remain skeptical while curious and hopeful. I guess. See that three compliments and three insults rolled up in one. Chris Hudson for ten dollars. Another great video. Thanks. Thanks for the tip, Chris. I really appreciate it. It really helps the channel. It really does. Defense by design for ten dollars. Are you familiar with? Whenever a comment starts with "Are you familiar with?" the answer is gonna be no. With the black slash dark pyramid story in Alaska. I have heard of that. Love the channel. Dallas guy here and a martial artist as well. All right. De defense by design. Um, defense by design. Drop your drop your system and your style in the chat. Let's, let's see what you're working on. Um, I don't know too much. I've only heard about the, the pyramid in Alaska because people sent it through the tips line. I haven't looked into it yet. But if it's – and look, if I say something's in the tips line, don't, don't be like, ah, someone already sent it in. Send it in again. Um, like – if I say I've seen it in there, still send it in because as when we see them repeating over and over, then I start to get the message that all right, this is important. Like Phil Schneider, I didn't wasn't really going to do Phil Schneider, but he came up so many times that I had to do it. Hey, Ajax Slam Goody is back for five dollars. Hey, AJ, I replied to your email in all caps and sent you three links about the alien abduction in Kentucky, and you said thanks. All right, cool, cool. I have to look back for that. Carol for $1.99. Hi, Carol. Entertaining pudding is my favorite kind of pudding for $5. Great, Paul Harvey. <laughs> thanks. Love your show. Just a couple of bucks to say thanks and happy holidays. And Merry Christmas to you. Good day. Jesse Hicks, $1.99. Thoughts on the real story behind Skinwalker Ranch? I don't want to do the whole thing here because I haven't done an episode on it yet. But I just, I got to watch to see where the, Got to see where Gregorio is. You know, sometimes he gets distracted. Um, so Skinwalker, I think I'm going to debunk that as a major grift. But but like I said earlier, when I debunk, I you really have to be right about it. I don't want to be – you don't want to be so-so because you jump on me in the comments. Patrick, the mailman, um, is that an afterlife afterlife reference? Wasn't he, wasn't Pat the Mailman on that show? It was super funny. Um, season one. My friend Mikey made me watch your show. I love it. Great job. Keep the fish. All right. Mikey might be a genius, Patrick. Tell him I said so. Simon says, $20. This channel is the greatest thing since Art Bell and Unsolved Mysteries and X-Files. I disagree, but I appreciate the compliment. Jesus is here for $9.99. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a huge fan of your work. Love what you did with the fishes and loaves. Permafit is back. Let's see if there's more homework for nine ninety nine. Uh, Perma Permafit has has one is thrown a hundred bucks in here with the homework. Base for the Smithsonian was is eugenics. Rich Europeans are superior, so everything must fit the model of thinking. So suppress anything that doesn't fit the model. Eugenics is lit, 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 lit and well just renamed. Um, so. I know that comment sounds a little, you know, I know, I'm not going to have to say, you know how it sounds, but permafit is correct. And I just didn't include it in this episode, but one of the senior people and, and the founder, one of the founders of the geologic society that worked with the Smithsonian early, early on um, was another professor, Jordan, I believe uh, he was the, he was the, Founding the one of the founders of Stanford University, he was a huge believer in eugenics, huge, but which was something that nobody really knew until pretty recently. Now they're renaming buildings and roads that had the guy's name on it. But yeah, you permafit's right. Eugenics was a big part of that. Inner maybe still is. 
Inner Sciences Society for 1999. Uh, you're an inspiration. I try to learn from you and improve my little channel. I love the Wi files, the content, Hecklefish, and the storytelling. Would you do anything on the Inner Earth? Thoughts? Um, Inner Sciences Society, go ahead and post the link or to your channel. Let's we'll check it out. Thanks for the not kind words. And anything on inner, inner Earth? Yes, Hollow Earth, which I think we the same thing. We're definitely doing, like doing it in short order. Um, where's Gregorio? It's getting there. Uh, in short order. The problem, the, 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 the holdup is I just have been so far behind because there are a few topics that I want to do immediately, like Hollow Earth, Atlantis, and I forget the others, but assume that I remembered them. But they just need more time than I have. You know, Hollow Earth, really, I need to pay thoughtful attention to that topic. So that, that's, what, that's what I'm waiting on. Tyrant Moore for $5. I studied a lot of this, and it seems history is being hidden from us. Mm -hmm. It also seems like aliens played a hand in creating us. Could be. You know, that's, uh, that, that's, that's the, the argument about the missing link. How did it happen? How did we go from primates to sentient conscious beings and why are we the only ones who did that so um i'm i hate to name drop but i'm gonna do it again but rogan and i and gino talked about this a little bit that was it aliens that came here and said oh you know there's monkeys these monkeys have pretty big brains let's just you know just level them up and and get humans and another theory is that while while early hominids maybe even just you know or primates were foraging they came across psychedelic mushrooms and or psychedelic something and it sort of awakened consciousness in them by by opening the pineal gland i it's super interesting but it's one of those things that how did consciousness how do we become who we are no matter what theory you throw out there it sounds crazy like a monkey ate a mushroom and become a person? <laughs> that sounds crazy. You know, or a monkey met an alien and became a person? It sounds crazy, but there has, there is something. It, it, it's just, it's the only thing that makes sense. Because, what you know, what, why aren't there no, why the, the dolphins don't have internet? They're supposed to be smart. How come there's no Dr. Dolphins? You know, something happened that made us so super special. What's the, what's the missing piece? You answer that question, Randall Barron, for $5. You answer it. You answer it. Cole Peterson for $20. Please help us make aware of the dangers of Wendigos. They are real. The screams and blood curdling, the screams and blood curdling screams of them in northern Minnesota has scared all of us locals. Dead bears, wolves, missing hunters. It needs attention. Please, AJ. Thanks, Cole Peterson, for that frightening, frightening tip. Um, not a huge cryptids guy. Wendigos, I'll look at that. Send it in the tips line so I remember and so I kind of get a reminder that that is something that you want to see. It, Wendigos have been covered a lot. But if I could find something new, I'll, I'll do it. Jacob, for $10 Australian, have you ever done an episode on NDEs? He means near-death experiences. I haven't. That's That was one of those on the list that needs more attention because I'm fascinated by NDEs. Um, fascinated by them. Uh, they, they can't hear you, I don't think. Um, I'm fascinated by them because my dad had a few, you know, that he came back from and, and talked about. So I'm really interested in NDEs, but I want to have enough time to be thoughtful with it. So currently on the schedule of just churning and churning, constantly being late with the episodes, it's not, a, it's really not enough time. Um, but I'm definitely going to do it. Bo Fatty's Games is back for $5. My cousin and I saw UFO in Newark, Ohio around 2011. I don't have any video evidence. Of course, but I just want to mention Newark was covered in mounds before. That's true. All the Ohio River, that whole area, some of the biggest cities in the world were there. Randall Barron is back for five dollars. The audio from the Barney Hill hypnotherapy session is out. He describes the occupants of the UFO as German Nazis in SS uniforms. Yes, he does. Um, I have avoided the Hill case because I would, because I'm not, I because I'm not a believer in in uh, Betty and Barney Hill. Although they make their story is certainly one of the most compelling and and Betty something that really shocked me was Betty Hill 
back then, Betty Hill, not, not, not Betty Hill, Betty Hill. She, when she drew a star map of where the aliens that she saw were, and she drew and said it was Zeta Reticuli, which is fascinating because that is the planetary system from the Serpo project. Remember, planet Serpo is in Zeta Reticuli, and she drew that. That's crazy to me. But still, I'm not a huge fan of that story for uh, for a bunch of reasons that I won't get into now because we're, we're wrapping up. I think we issued a moratorium on the on the Super Chats. We did. Adam Knopfler do an episode on the Simpsons predictions. All right, that would be a fun one. I did a couple, I did a couple of shorts on the Simpsons predictions that were fun. Tyra Moore's back for $10. Uh, I heard about a Bible predated Christianity that said reincarnation is real. There isn't a heaven or hell. If you do an episode trying to piece together aliens or religion and history. You know, what's funny about that comment is I bet all of that information is in the Vatican archives somewhere. I bet it's all down there in the secret archives. Um, I mean, that's the rumor, right? Is there's there's proof, there's evidence that that there was no Jesus, and it's all a story that it's down in the archives. Um, that's a, that's a super interesting idea. I love the religious stories. I tend not to do them because I'm worried that people will see the thumbnail and think it's just going to be a religion story and not a fun mystery story. Um, but I like the suggestion, uh, Mr. Tyrant. Andy Stein for ten dollars. I feel like it's highly possible that. Evidence of ancient civilizations might be suppressed to protect organized religions. News that could discredit religious states' events may cause a global uproar. I mean, that was in the, the Project Blue Book memo, you know, back in the 50s, is, is that we have to suppress the information because of the panic and everyone would question their faith. But society's become so secularized, I don't know if it's that big of a deal anymore. And, you know, certainly since then, if we're talking the fifties and project blue book, don't say anything because of religion since then, the, the Catholic church at least has acknowledged that aliens and life on other planets could be a thing because why not? If God made this, God made that. That's, I mean, that's what they said, right? So God made all of it. That works. I don't know how, you know, other religions, feel about that, but I don't see why that would be a problem. I, I, I think the suppression has more to do with power, money and power, not so much religion. Uh, cause you know, no matter what they tell us, the people in charge don't care about God. Rika for S five SGDs. I don't know what those are, but the, but it looks awesome. Despite of giants, UFO and lizard people nicely done. The strangest thing is human is still the most dominant species on earth. Maybe we need Y files on, on human. I, you know, I see what you're saying. What, it's, uh, trying to, to, to do a story about the origin of consciousness, I think, is a good one. Um, but not strange that humans are the most dominant species on earth. We're the smartest species on earth. So, I mean, that's what's going to happen. Apex predators. Dale Warren, realtor, dropping the big number on us, forty nine ninety nine. Thanks for that, Dale. I appreciate it. Love your videos. Thank you. Got to be honest. You ever get any calls from the government on some of these great videos? Got to get a hecklefish. Um, I have not gotten a call from the government on any of these. Uh, I think I said this last week. Come on, Gregorio, where are you? I think I said this last week is that even though we we kind of do the, the – clearly I'm an anti-government guy. If you follow the channel, you know that. And I'm – I'm constantly pounding the government for suppression and censorship. But if let's say that a memo circulated through the FBI about the channel, the agent would get it. Say, all right, let me look it up. And, and there would be a talking, it'd be me and a talking fish. He'd be like, this guy is not dangerous. I mean, so I think we're fine. Just in case we're not, I'm armed. Arnold Hill. Thank you for the dollar. Um, for $1.99, this is from Nunya Business. <laughs> How about we do a show on, on the Easter Island? Um, Easter Island would be a, a cool one. I mean, the, there's great stories about the, the statues, the, you know, the heads that are on Easter Island, because remember, they aren't heads. We see the heads. The whole body's down there, you know, 30, 40 feet down there. That's a whole statue. I think it would be fun to get into some of that stuff. 
Fluff Paw for $20. Thanks for the entertainment. You're welcome. Did you do any shows on the odd things found in Antarctica plus government cover-ups? Um, I've done the occasional cover cover-up story. Antarctica, yes. Um, take a look a few months back at the uh, Admiral Byrd. I forget. You'll find it. It had, It's about Admiral Byrd. We covered Antarctica. It's about how it it was the uh, Operation High Jump. Look for that one. We talk about how he flew his plane. Sorry about the spoilers. He flew his plane into the hollow earth and met aliens down there. That's all I'll tell you. But it was that was a fun episode. Rick Roberts, $5. In all your research, what conspiracy did you find to be true and blows your mind? There's no conspiracy I could say is definitively true. But certainly a lot of them have, have made me like question my thinking. I mentioned this last week about the hollow moon, about the moon being hollow. When I started that, come on, Gregorio. When I started that episode, I thought it was the most bonkers idea that the moon is hollow. And then about halfway through, I was like, the moon is hollow. Clearly it's hollow. So that happens with a lot of these is I start out skeptical and then I kind of get one over. Mackie for 50 HR, what are HR case? What is your opinion on global flood stories? Considering so many different cultures, even religions have a legend of it. Makes you wonder what human civilization was like before it. Yeah, I think, I think the flood happened. I mean, no one really knows for sure, but if, if, if I had to, you know, give my guess, it would be that the ice caps in the last ice age were melted by a, a super solar storm or some type of solar event. At, during the Younger Dryas that flooded the entire earth. 400 sea levels rose 400 feet in a, about a week and changed life on the planet, changed the climate, changed who was here. I think that happened. You know, nobody knows for sure, although Robert Schock makes some good cases about, um, you know, the, the erosion patterns at the bottom of the Sphinx. I don't know if, I'm assuming you guys know about all that stuff, but if you don't, when you look at those erosion erosion patterns in the Sphinx, it clearly was made by water, by violent, violent water. James Nathaniel Lockhart for $10. I recently received a friend request on Facebook, and it was some super creepy guy, it wasn't me, who alleged, who alleged that he was trying to recruit me for the Illuminati. Pretty sure they don't recruit that way, LOL. They don't recruit that way. That, that, that person was recru recruiting you for other activities. I don't recommend accepting that friend request. But if you do, make sure we know how to find you. You're in trouble. PMPC mining for $5. Thoughts of looking into the Sumerian tablets and the exact timeline of the Anunnaki here on Earth and the tablets give. I, I'd like to do Anunnaki and Sumerian. That's one I've stayed away from because it's so heavily covered. But it keeps coming up. And I, we, no, no one's talked about Anunnaki enough lately. It's, it's, time for, it's time for that cycle to come around again. Um, but I do mention them in episodes here and there. I talk certainly talk about the Sumerian gods like Inki and his brother and how they were Anunnaki. I talk about this. You know, I I mention them, but a whole video on it, sure. I, I'm into it. Daisy Duke 323, um, holla to uh, Los Angeles, 999. Have you considered doing an investigative field trip with a group of your supporters to some of the ancient archaeological sites? I would so go. Love this channel. Happy holidays to you and Jen. Um, Merry Christmas to you, Daisy Dukes. Yeah, I'd like to go into the field. It's just about time and money is really all it is. Um, but there, there are a few places that, uh, that we've talked about that would be fun to go do, you know, to go shoot in the field. If we get time, that is something we'll, we'll definitely do. Uh, we'll, we'll do it once and we'll see how it performs. Todd Twilley for 10 bucks. Love the work you're doing. Thanks, Todd. I'm literally waiting for every episode. Hey, I was waiting for this one today too. Uh, you're an amazing presenter that should have his own show on TV as a host, not a producer. I thought so too in the uh, in the early 2000s, but uh, but the industry disagreed with us. But thank you for the kind words. Awaken Journey Media for five dollars. What's your take on out of place artifacts? Ooh, parts. Could the Earth have countless cycles of humanoid civilizations that have come and gone? Where's Gregorio? He's not here yet. Um, out of place artifacts. I like that <clears throat> we have like a, an ooh parts story sort of in the hopper. Most of them are debunked. So I want to have enough content there to where we can debunk some and then have some that are inexplicable. Uh, and there are some of those. 
which brings us to could the Earth have had countless cycles? And he's talking about the Silurian hypothesis where uh, a civilization evolves and grows to a level of technology and then is wiped out and then starts again. You know, I don't know about that. I feel like we would have evidence of that. But if you watch the video um, on the Silurian hypothesis on that channel called The Y Files, you'll see that he said that it doesn't take that long for all evidence to go away. Even if there was a nuclear war, it would only take about two or three million years for all evidence of that to be gone. So no metal, no plastic, definitely no stone, no wood, it would all be gone. So it could be. But if it if something so drastic happens that wipes out all of the all of that technology all around the world, then how does you know the Antikythera mechanism exist? How did it survive, especially underwater? So I don't know. I like the idea, though. I just, you know, I wish there was some evidence of it. Fla Steven for four ninety nine wants flat Earth and mud fossils. I'd like to do flat Earth, um, but YouTube does not like flat Earth videos unless you're hard debunking them, which, which of course we would debunk. You know, you can't really debunk flat Earth. Although I, may, you know, if you're a flat Earther, and <laughs> you believe it. And and look, flat Earth videos are super fun. Even if you if you're not if you're not a flat Earth person, which most of our us aren't, but if you like like fun conspiracies, like Gregorio, go on an alt video platform like Rumble and search for flat Earth videos. The they're amazing with the uh, the evidence the evidence that they have. It's it's amazing. Yeah, uh, you know I I don't believe in flat Earth, but you watch an hour or two of those videos, you walk away going, huh, you know, God made some. My guy made some pretty good points. I mean, he was picking food out of his beard while he was making the points, but he, they were good points. Three, the Hawk Lord, a.k.a. Hawk Lord, zero seven for three pounds. Um, what happened to the dangerous planet X? Allegedly, it's still there. Um, that'll be part of the Nibiru episode, and maybe we'll talk about the brown dwarf, the binary system, um, but we'll, we'll talk about planet X. Uh, Rama Dula for $10. Thank you for that. Merry Christmas. Jim Dugan, two dollars. Say Malachi, Malachi, and procession of the Pope's prediction. I don't know that story, Jim. I'm assuming that's a suggestion, not just random stuff. But send that in the tips line. Here's the link for you. Uh, none of your business is back for a dollar ninety nine. How about doing an episode about the Shroud of Torn? I love the Shroud of Torn story. Um, it's debunked, you know, it's debunked, but I do love that story. Checking on Gregorio. He's he's on his way. So we're going to be wrapping up in just, just 10 minutes here. Quick wrap. It's just 15 seconds. Shroud of Torin is allegedly the the cloth that Jesus was wrapped in when, yeah, when he's taken down from the from the cross, from the crucifixion. He's wrapped in the cloth, and then he's set in the cave. This The, the Shroud of Torin is that cloth he was wrapped in. Um, and you see the impression of his face. If we had more time, I'd call up pictures and stuff because it's super fascinating. You see, you see his face and like his shoulders, you see it on the on the shroud. It's amazing. And there's been they've done um x-rays on it and all kinds of I want to say spectrometry, but I'm not sure it was that, but all kinds of research on the shroud to show that it's really in there. But it looks like the shroud is is actually from like the 12th or 13th century and was in a fire. And that's why we have those stains on there. And it's not necessarily stains of Jesus. It just looks like it. It's pareidolia. We kind of see what we want to see. But that's that's the mainstream. Um, that's the mainstream story. Maybe not. But I love the story so much. Maybe we'll look at it. That's Prasangi Pelpula for it. 20 Australian. Thank you for that. It's very generous of you. It's super helpful. Greg Villanueva for 49 of those is a super sticker. I don't know what those are, but it's a cool icon. Fluffpaw is back for a dollar 49 super sticker. Thanks, Fluffpaw. Bevito, Bevito, Vito for 499. Have you heard of the US government funded expedition led by Nicholas uh to Shemp? No, I have not heard that. But if that's on the tip line, that's great. Cause uh, we'll put that in the um the Hollow Earth episode with Shambhala. That'd be perfect. Edward Chaltron for five dollars. Don't be apologetic about the plugs. We show up here for a reason. Thanks, Edward. I appreciate that. Speaking of plugs, if you'd like to support the Y Files, you can you can you can visit us uh, on Patreon. Uh, 
And you can support the Y Files on Patreon for as little as $3 a month. You get access to videos uh, a few days early or earlier than that if I ever get caught up. Um, to exclusive live streams, which eventually we'll do. We've done one before, but that's okay. I'm not selling it well, but you know, look, that's if you want to support the channel, Patreon's a great way to do that. Uh, Daniel Anderson, $10. Merry Christmas. Thanks for the channel videos. Merry Christmas to you, Daniel. Thanks for the tip. Chad wrote for $2. Find out who murdered Art Bell. That's that's a good one. That's a good one. Animals in Nature, $9.99. Will work for free. What volunteer positions are available? Well, you got to stay tuned. Don't email me yet. Uh, we're going we're gonna to set up a web page with how you can get involved in the channel. And if I don't know... We're, we will have volunteers, but we will try to limit those because I don't want an army of people working for free. You know, if you're going to be researching, writing, and editing and doing that kind of stuff, you're going to get paid. Um, some There will be plenty of other volunteer work as well. But uh, but I, I, I'll throw something in the community tab when, when that's ready. Derek Hargrove, $2, just buying hecklefish some extra fish food. Eh? He appreciates that. Inner Sciences Society, four ninety nine. The book Forbidden Archaeology by Cremo talks about archaeologists that were silenced because they found evidence that pushes mankind further than accepted. I believe that. Um, that sounds like a book I'd like to check out. I just keep an eye on Gregorio over there. Jennifer Thompson for nine ninety nine. There are a couple of interesting stories from the Dallas Fort Worth area. One of them is the Lake Worth monster, half man, half goat, right next to Lockheed Martin. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know about, about that. Isn't half man, is, is, is that a satyr? Is a half man, half go to satyr? And why is he, why is he in the lake? Can goats even swim? But, you know, Lock, Lockheed is shady, so I'm not surprised. Bubba Hotep, it's like a hip hop Egyptian name, uh, $10.00. Love your show. Thanks. Speaking of working towards zero point energy, just a few days ago, Department of Energy National Labs made history by achieving fusion, fusion ignition. Uh, did they, though? I don't know if they achieved it. I have to look at the article again because I, th I, I thought I was just getting clickbaited. Um, but I have to look at that. That was in my feed. Uh, Codem Strife for $5, new to live. Cool. Welcome aboard. This is what happens here. And look, I never said it was good. I never said it was good. So don't even say, you know, I signed on there for the live thing and he said it was going to be good. And it was just him answering questions in the chat. I never said it was good. In fact, I've said that I don't have anything for you guys, but you keep showing up. So I'm going to talk to you. Um, so this is what it is, Codem Strife. Uh, not sure if anyone, any videos on sleep paralysis, everyone who goes through it experiences almost the same terrifying experience. That's true. We're going to be doing shadow people and sleep paralysis will be part of that. And uh, we'll be talking about sleep paralysis, also the medical and scientific aspect of that, so you can kind of understand what it is and hypnagogic hallucinations and hypnagogic response and some of that stuff, because it's, uh, it's interesting to me. Um, that's probably going to be next week. We'll see if I can get some sleep. Mike George, $5. Hey, I wanted to say thanks for the great content week after week. Thanks for the tip, Mike. I'm happy to do it. Um, I could do this or I can work for a living. I'd rather do this. Juan Barrera for four ninety nine. dollars Opinion on 1.6 gigahertz signal, Skinwalker Ranch. Yours and Jen's uh, picks, uh, picks for Sunday final. What kind of GPU do you run your PC? Will you become a patron? All, so many questions, Juan, I, you, but you're getting your $5 worth. Um, the 1.6 gigahertz signal, I know about that. I don't have an opinion on it yet. When I research Skinwalker, I will look specifically at that. Because, as you know, that's a common frequency. So we'll look at that. Um, the GPU on my edit machine is a NVIDIA RTX 3090. And you promised you'd be on Patreon, so I'm going to look for that tonight. It's only 3 bucks, by the way. 10x bull, thank you for the $10 super sticker. Inkling for four ninety nine. dollars Do you ever feel that your life is in danger when you do this content? You're an ancient astronaut theorist. Hey, Hecklefish. I don't feel like my life is in danger yet, but I do stay in contact with friends and family, and I keep myself armed at all times. All right, food is here, and uh, so I think we're going to wrap it up. We're going to say goodnight. I'm sorry if I didn't get to you. I think we got to most everybody, only a, only a few left. Um, but thanks again for, for everyone tuning in. I really appreciate it. And uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Happy holidays.